if it wasn't working. Okay, great. So we do have a quorum, so I'll call our meeting to order because we do have quite a bit to go through um, today. But first of all, um, thank you uh, to all the members for joining us. Um, and I uh, hope you all had a nice um, long holiday weekend. Um, I'd also like to, um, I guess, note for the record, so to speak, um, that we are down one um, faithful, hardworking, uh, longstanding member of Alan uh, Lipson, who's, uh, has he officially moved out of town yet or is, or is in process of that, but truly dedicated to this commission and a really great person to be on it with. And in my short time that we got to sit next to each other, I already learned a ton from him, which uh, I will miss not being able to turn to him and ask him a question <laughs> about something that has happened in the recent history. So um, I do really appreciate him. So I wanted to make sure we had that in the record. Any other comments to that effect? Or anyone want to share other thoughts about that? He will be missed. Yeah. Can we put him on speed dial? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you have him on speed dial? Maybe that would be. No, I do not. He never shared that number. <laughs> he, he would refuse to answer, I bet. I do have him on speed dial, by the way, because I wrote him in years ago to a different organization, which he, I'm sure he regretted ever since, but you can always throw Alan in. So, yeah, he will definitely, um, Kathleen will, but he will definitely be missed. Um, but I think he's, uh, may not miss us or may not <laughs> miss having to do this. Um, so next up, Chris, and um, do we jump right into the public hearing portion? Um, that makes sense. And I think uh, for folks who are on, I'm hearing some background noise, so we may be typing. Um, so when you're not on, you probably mute yourself. Um, but Chris, should we jump right into the public hearing, or is there other business we should do before we? Because that will be the majority of our meeting tonight. We'll be covering yeah. that. No, I think we should just get going with the hearing. Okay. Um, as we're going to jump into the hearing, I did want to note and. Um, that we had a little bit of discussion that I wanted to bring on to the record here about, um, in general, our ex parte rules and in general, generally speaking, no commission member uh, should be discussing things outside of our um, public hearings or public meetings um, to make sure we're not having those types of ex parte communications. The best thing to do when people ask, we're a small friendly town, people are always asking, is to refer folks to the town offices or to the website or the TPC, um, the town planning and zoning page on the town website. Um, in the spirit of, of that, um, I, I will disclose and I sort of invite folks to disclose if they would like to that I was reached out to by um, two folks, um, two members of the, the public. Um, one before we had the this particular petition before us, um, uh, which I think, because we didn't have anything pending before us, was uh, something that isn't um, grounds to disqualify me from this particular meeting. But I was uh, approached um, by someone um, since the pendency of this petition who wanted to talk to me generally and at a high level about um, uh, AstroTurf fields and not really the specifics of this particular application. Um, and I told her that um, we do have a petition coming before us. That is the proper form, that she should participate in that, that she should submit you know, questions, comments, all things through that process um, as part of our conversation. But I did want to disclose that. I don't feel that would disqualify me from um, continuing in this matter, but I wanted to put it to the group if they had any views on that. I'm all ears and willing to listen. And then if others want um, to share if they've had other similar contacts, they can. But we'll start with me. I thought I'll be the guinea pig <laughs> of them first, um, but I just wanted to disclose um, that to the group. 
Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to echo your sentiments because I was approached by, I, I, I couldn't tell you how many, just by a number of, of people whom, uh, who live in town uh, with similar thoughts. And, and I told them that uh, I didn't realize that this hearing, people couldn't chime in live. I thought they could have chimed in live, but I told them to consult the town's website for uh, what the agenda was, um, who can attend, and how they can participate. And thank you, Paul. And um, and the participation today, and um, you'll have to buckle up for a, a long reading by me, will be literally, there have been quite a few comments that have been presented to the board. I will be reading them into the record. So um, that is for the rules of our, our new COVID reality that everyone has had the opportunity up till four o'clock today to submit written comments. And I will, and when my voice gives out, Chris will take over for me, um, but I will read every comment into the record. It's also being, um, being shown live and recorded. When we get to the end, we can talk about whether um, after all of that, we, um, and there will be a lot of material presented to us tonight whether we should have a vote tonight or um, can continue that vote to a later time. But I, I don't want to get there yet, but. Um, Chris or Rob, how do those comments work that were attachments of other people's work or websites or articles? Do they all get read in? So I'm not going to do a dramatic reading of websites or articles, but for the uh, uh, submissions, via email, I will read the email, which will be the, the primary comment and will note where applicable, this email attached this document and that document. All of those though, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, are all available. She's been scanning all literally nonstop for days. Um, they're all now, you know, uploaded or in the process of being uploaded. They're, the last big batch is in the process of being uploaded and will be uploaded by tomorrow morning because we needed to start this meeting. but. So further clarification, when, when there had been letters, I, I understand the email comments, um, but, and Paul asked about, you know, websites and all that, but there were a number of letters as well, numerous letters from Mount Sinai, letters from the Sharing Conservation Commission, those will just be referenced. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I will read a full letter. If it's a two or three page letter, I'm going to read the letter. I will, but like the Mount Sinai example, there was a letter, but there was also a position statement and a few other things. I'll just read the letter that they identified as their testimony and then reference that they also attached as supporting documentation. A few other things. I, I, oh, great. I mean, if that's the way it has to be done, it has to be done, but we're gonna spend an hour and a half with you reading, which is not a good use of our time. And so I would suggest that at some point we discuss another way of doing this, even if that means making a recording of such letters in advance that we, you know, all acknowledge is an accurate uh, representation of what was submitted, because um, it, it it just doesn't seem like a good use of our time after reading all that material to now hear you read it in. I understand if that's what our policies are, but it's. Um, Frustrating. Yeah. No, understood. Um, but I think that's the best we can do right now in under these circumstances. And, and Chris, that is the guidance we got from town council and other. Correct. Yeah. But um, Kathleen, I agree. We can um, go back and after we've done this. And I'm a fast reader and writer and speaker. I'll keep it moving. So let's keep it moving. So um, and anyone else have anything else on the preliminary or upfront matters? Going once, going twice, nope. Um, so I think, Chris, we're all set. If you wanted to, I believe, hand it over to the applicant for their um, short presentation. I believe they have access to the computer at the moment. So they can no, go it, so we're going to give a presentation in advance of you reading everything. I, I thought that was the. That's the normal procedure. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, we'll follow whatever whatever you guys would like us to do. So we we do have a fairly short presentation. Uh, we will share the content now and tell me if this comes up for you. 
Let me know when you can. Can you see the screen that we're sharing? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So thank you all for your time and everybody in the middle of summer here and on vacation. We, we greatly appreciate you getting together virtually here. Um, we've been working uh, in, with the school district uh, now for several months. I guess we start. So my name is Dan Grover, professional engineer, uh, licensed here in the state of Connecticut. Uh, work with Milo McBroom. Our office is located at 195 Church Street in New Haven. Uh, we also have offices in Cheshire as well. Uh, here with me tonight is Andrew Dijak uh, from Fieldsurf. Um, and also on the line, you'll see pictured in the upper right there, uh, the superintendent, superintendent of Schools, Dr. Byers, uh, is here to answer any questions that you might have on the board event side. Um, but we, so we started back on this project back uh, in the late winter, uh, starting by uh, locating inland wetlands that were located around the site, uh, doing a topographic survey uh, of the property, of the area, and then working closely with uh, the school officials on exactly what we were trying to accomplish uh, with this project. So the project is intended to reconstruct the existing track and field facility, which you see pictured on this existing conditions graphic uh, dated April 2020. Um, so in the in the center, uh, you'll see existing track uh, in black here. It's an eight lane track around the existing uh, natural grass field. Field and track has been here for many years. There's also a, and I should, I should mention fourth on this is generally up a little off to the right here. Um, you have a home bleacher uh, here on the south side of the track. You have a visiting bleacher, smaller bleacher on the north side. And then in green here, this is a graphic that we presented to the Wetlands Commission uh, last month. And the green is the, the wetlands upland area. And there's several wetlands that are our wetland scientists flag and around the site. There's a little small uh, intermittent water course here, a wetland system south of the property uh, here, and then another wetland system uh, up here. And the green is the upland review uh, for the wetland. Uh, we went through that process with wetlands uh, and the application was approved by wetlands with a couple very minor standard conditions. Uh, so we have been through uh, the wetlands. Now, now I'm going to move to our proposed plan, uh, which looks very much like the existing condition, um, other than we are uh, we're making the track a little bit wider um, in this case so that we could fit uh, soccer, uh, a full size soccer field. It's really tight on the existing field. Um, so we're making the track a little bit wider on this side, uh, which is going to push a little bit closer to the bleacher here, but still an eight lane track. Um, still we'll have a you know, a track surface material on it. It'll be a post-tension track, uh, post-tension concrete track, as opposed to an asphalt base track, um, which is which is great. The track will last a long time on that post-tension uh, concrete base. Uh, but essentially, the orientation of the track uh, almost identical, other than being a little wider. Uh, the bleacher on the south side, the home bleacher, were not modified at all. The bleacher on the north side, we're kicking over about three feet. Uh, to make way so that the bleacher literally is just going to be a, a bigger concrete pad. It's going to be pushed over and re-bolted to, uh, to the concrete, but no, no material change there. We are modifying a couple of the uh, jumping, uh, jumping events. Uh, we're rebuilding the long jump, triple jump uh, event area that's currently in this location, uh, but we're going to build it in a little bit more efficient manner uh, so the school can host uh, a more efficient uh, track meet. We're going to have two um, long jump, triple jumps side by side here. Like I said, generally at the same location where they are now. And then we're going to move the pole vault uh, down into the corner here. Um, and the pole vault will be located in this, this area here. Another big improvement we're doing are the, the lights. I can go into any questions that you have on that. But the, the, the lighting system is is uh, kind of outdated at this point. It's not very efficient. Uh, the level of light on the field is, is not, not great. It's not up to current standards. Um, so we're replacing the lighting uh, with a new LED 
uh, lighting system, which is incredibly efficient. Uh, these new LED systems are very, very good at directing light, specifically to where you want to shine the light. So we'll have more light on the field for the athletes, but we'll actually have less light shining off of the field. So the spill off of the field is actually dramatically less, uh, or, or less, I shouldn't say dramatically, it's less when you get to the parking lot um, on the perimeter road here, and when you get to the property line here, the numbers are actually less than, uh, than the existing conditions. So the lighting system will be more efficient, more directed, uh, and, and certainly brighter for, for the athlete. And then the final piece is the, the uh, change from natural grass to synthetic turf surface. So in order to make that happen, which I think is you know, part of the trigger for this application, we have to remove the existing topsoil uh, that's on the field. So that topsoil will be pushed into a pile and it will be hauled off site. Uh, there's about 3,500 yards of soil that has to be removed from the site. Uh, and it will come in stone-based material that's stone-based allows more uh, drainage of the field, which is the, the main reason why you do a synthetic field. field. Uh, when you use a grass field and it rains, uh, you may lose one or two days of playability, maybe more, if the field is a um, So the reason why you go synthetic turf is because you can play you know, during a rainstorm, certainly after a rainstorm, and you can play on the field you know, a lot without damaging uh, the, the natural drainage. There's you know, limitations to how much you can play on a grass field. So it's it's a it's a durability, it's a weather uh, it's a weather issue, and it's you know real flexibility to use this facility uh, is is the reason that we're we're uh, proposing a synthetic turf uh, replacement of the natural grass uh, field. In addition, there's a couple other minor changes uh, that should enhance safety. Uh, we're putting in some ball safety netting uh, behind the end zones on both sides. That'll allow for track athletes that may be practicing while the cross match going on or the cross practice is going on. You're going to have errant balls uh, going through the end area and hitting an athlete. Uh, so that's on both sides. Also, the scoreboard that's out there now will get replaced with a new uh, video uh, scoreboard. Um, so that is the general proposal for the project. Uh, we've submitted a full set of design plans that includes anything from zoning data to existing conditions, layout plans which show all the dimensions of the facilities, um, also shows uh, the grading of the field, so you can see how the field will be regraded and the track will be regraded. It shows the drainage system that will be installed. There will be a new, what we call a collector pipe around the outside of the field. Uh, that will tie into the existing drainage system and the outlets. There's a couple outlet points. There's one that goes this way and one that goes this way. And we'll tie into those the kitchen collection. So we prepared a stormwater management uh, narrative and calculations that show that there will be no increase in runoff uh, from the site as a result of the drainage system that's being installed. Uh, and that was reviewed with the town consulting engineer, Priscolo Engineering. We received comments on June 17th of uh, this year. Um, what, what we consider pretty minor comments uh, that we worked through with them. Um, we responded to their letter the following day on June 18th, uh, in addition to having a couple conversations to make sure our responses uh, were adequate. Um, we responded on the 18th, and we had no issues incorporating um, any of the, the comments that the reviewing engineer uh, provided. There were there were more uh, you know notes to add you know certain check-ins uh, when certain things are done when the silt fence is staked out around the field they want uh, the town to be notified and they want uh, they want us as the engineer to certify uh, that the silt fence was put in in the correct spot so it, there were those types of comments um, so we worked through those um, now I can go through those in more detail. We also, because we are in a uh, aquifer protection area, uh, we had to notify the regional water authority um, in which we uh, talked with them and they didn't have any comments about, about the application, but we talked with Brad Walters from the regional water authority uh, and they were, they were good with the application. Uh, so those are the comments that we went through, the town staff comments, and there was one final, um, there was one, 
that it's in your application materials. I'm gonna find it here, but I think it, it helps me kind of frame the things that we specifically need to uh, needed the application for. So this was a letter that we submitted back in March, uh, March 20th, uh, 2020. Um, and this, these are the reasons why this application uh, was was triggered. Um, so yeah, hi, this so hard. Sorry, this is Rob Cleese. Sorry, I'm I'm only seeing like a gray screen right now. Okay, hold on. Let's if see you're it. showing a letter, I'm I'm not seeing. It. Yeah, that's all I'm seeing as well. Okay, it it is it's in the packet uh, that was initially submitted. If you have that, it's a memo to Christine Sullivan uh, from Chris Holt, professional engineer uh, with the biologic room. Dated March 20th, 2020. I, I, this is Rob. I do have that. It was on our website. It is just a two pager, correct? Actually, I, I think I know what's happening. Let me see here. Hold on. I think I need to flip which screen you're, you're seeing. Can you see it now? Yes, now we can see the middle of the memo the bulleted section is showing up on our screen don't zoom it in because it's hard for me to see here so the section i was going to highlight are, are these are the things that uh that we picked out of the zoning regs that we needed to, to come in for the special exception permit which is in front of of your commission so uh first section 3.3 and the excavation removal filling grading and processing of earth material so you have a trigger that when more than 100 cubic yards of soil is removed from the site, uh, this commission triggers that special exemption permit. Um, as I noted, we will be uh, moving uh, 3,500 yards uh, and bringing in the stone to replace that. Uh, so we've, we've, we've noted that. Um, the second point, section 5.5, the sediment erosion control regulations, um, we do have more than a half acre of disturbance which is the threshold. We have 4.6 acres of disturbance. Uh, we prepared a detailed soil and erosion control plan and, and uh, details and specifications that are part of the set of plans that we submitted. Um, we think those are in accordance with uh, the town's uh, guidance on erosion controls and also in accordance with the, the Connecticut Department of Erosion, uh, Environmental Protection Agencies, their 2002 Connecticut guidelines for soil erosion sediment control. Uh, and I'm happy to walk through any of those details on the s &E plan, but it'll include things like anti-tracking pads for any soil that might be coming off the site, make sure it stays on site. We have notes about uh, sweeping of any, you know, any soil that might get tracked off site uh, and swept up. We have notes to that effect. Um, silt fence uh, and hay bales kind of ringing around the perimeter uh, fence around the facility. So if there is any erosion, it gets trapped by those. Really, we don't expect on this on this type of project. We don't expect a lot of erosion because uh, the field basically you know, holds all the water. Uh, the, the, essentially, the way this will get built is all the topsoil will get taken out of the site, and you'll basically create a bowl in the middle of the track. So any water that comes in will, will kind of sit in the middle of the track and isn't prone to eroding off-site. Like if you had a big steep slope and you had water running and it was running off-site, that's not typically what these these projects are, but we do have inlet protection proposed on any of the catch basin structures to make sure that sediment's not getting into the drainage system. We do have inspections of the drainage system that need to be done at the end of the project. We need to make sure we're looking at the at the uh, inlets, cleaning them um, as needed, and we'll we'll be there to make sure that all of that is happening. Um, the next section is section 5.15, which is outdoor lighting. Um, and that's obviously triggered because we have the new lighting system. Um, so as I said, the system is uh, has, has less spillage off the facility. And again, if you'd like to see those, we do have, we submitted a existing photometric plan that we did by going out on site with a light meter and taking light level readings all around the site and off the site. Um, and then we have a new proposed photometric plan, um, which we've seen these um, very true after the light systems are put in. Um, so there's a proposed uh, model of what the lighting will be that was submitted. It shows there's more light on the field, there's less light spillage off the field. 
Uh, and then the, the final one is uh, section 6.3, and I think this section gets triggered because of the special exemption requirements, uh, which I guess is circular here, going back up to section 3.3. Um, so the use of the field is going to be identical to what it is today. It's going to be a track. It's going to be a field. It's going to have lighting. It's going to have a scoreboard. So there's no changes uh, in, the, in the use of the field. Uh, so with that, I think that kind of concludes um, how we kind of got here, why we're in front of the commission, our proposal, um, the review that we had from the town engineer, from RWA. Um, so I... I think that concludes my part of the presentation. Andrew may want to speak um, after your comments uh, come in. I guess, um, I guess that is a question, Commissioner. We we have an opportunity to present or respond to the meetings uh, that you're giving us looking through the emails or letters or. Um, I believe yes, though, Chris. Um, or Sullivan, do you have a reaction to that? Certainly, they have the, the right to respond yeah. to comments that are submitted. Good. It's always good when I actually am right when I better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, so. I think instead of doing a shotgun presentation on a variety of different things, what I'd like to do is hear the comments coming in, uh, see what the concerns are, and then maybe react. I, and, and that sounds fine with me, but other members of the the commission. So we will. I will begin sort of reading through the comments. We'll go. Hopefully, you know, probably about an hour. We can check in maybe at that point, and then for the applicants. Um, my guess is they'll the categories within those comments that you guys will be able to respond to, you know, in general. Can, may I suggest that to guarantee an efficient use of our time that um, they take notes and they respond after all comments have been read. I fear that if we allow interruption of the reading of the comments, we will never get through them. No, I'm exaggerating slightly, but I just think that we have to be efficient here. Yes. Yeah, no, that, that was the, the plan. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, and I just, uh, I will hopefully get through all the comments within the next hour of, of reading. Um, but I at least wanted to have a, a it's eight o'clock now. Um, if I'm still going and we'll look at how far I get along by nine o'clock, maybe we'll take a pause there and, and see if we need to rechart. Anything else, though, from the applicant before I start reading comments? Any questions, actually, from our um, commission to the applicant just on their presentation that they've given us? That, that concludes our presentation. Thank you, Commissioner. Great. Anyone on uh, the planning and zoning have any initial questions for Malona McBroon or, or anyone else in the application? Hey, Rob, I say one question for you. So. When you're going through the questions, I'm sorry, what the public comments, you're not going to editorialize nor summarize. Are you reading verbatim everything? I am literally just okay. sitting here reading. Okay, got it. So if we hear the same comment over and over again, it's not, it's just because that's how it was submitted. Okay, thank you. Yep. No, good question. Any other questions or comments? Alrighty, um, Chris, I'm going to start in the box with the two large, or the first of the two large stacks that begins with um, James McVitie, MD. That's the first comment we got, so you're right on target. Okay. Um, to the Woodbridge Town Planning and Zoning, as a resident of Woodbridge for 30 plus years and a retired physician, I strongly support a moratorium on the planned artificial turf field at Amity High School and encourage the Planning and Zoning Commission to deny the application for the field at the upcoming meeting based on the potential health and environmental impact. Respectively, James McVitie, uh, MD of Woodbridge, Connecticut. Next one. 
turf proposal, writing to oppose plan for artificial turf, both due to dangers of rubber, aromatic compounds, and MRSA risk. Risk of COVID has not been excess. And this is from Jola, um, whose email address is Komodo. I'm actually not going to read the rest, but this is from Jola. Permit to install the artificial turf field. Dear Christine Sullivan, I'm writing to let you know I'm strongly opposed to the installation of the artificial turf field at Amity High School due to the well-documented safety concerns around recycled rubber surfaces. Woodbridge Plan and Zoning Commission should deny the application for a permit to install this artificial turf field and also call for a moratorium on the use of recycled rubber tire at municipal at Amity Senior High School. Our health and children's our children's health and safety depends on it. Thank you, Laura Dane of Woodbridge. Dear Woodbridge Planning and Zoning, I wish to urge the Woodbridge Plan and Zoning Commission to deny the application to install artificial turf on the MD High School field at its meeting on July 6. This risks great harm to hundreds of students and an avalanche of significant expenses and a loss of moral and safety reputation for the town of Woodbridge. It should not be done unless studies can be presented assuring the safety of students and safety for our environment. Sincerely, Dan Oren, Woodbridge, Connecticut. Um, from attaches a letter from the Council on Environmental Quality. So I'll read that um, from Peter Hearn, Executive Director. Honorable Chair and Commission members, a Woodbridge resident brought to the Council's attention some concerns regarding the possible installation of artificial turf on a playing field at the Regional High School in Woodbridge. That person sent documentation regarding the probable presence of PFAS chemicals in artificial turf. This reference caught the attention of staff at the Council because of the recent and ongoing effort to identify and control PFAS exposure in Connecticut as a consequence of the work of the Governor's PFAS Task Force. The action plan of the PFAS Task Force stated PFAS easily migrate in the environment and cause contamination of soil, sediment, groundwater, and surface water. Since PFAS are not currently known to be broken down by natural processes, it could persist in the environment indefinitely and earn the nickname Forever Chemicals. As such, humans and animals can be exposed to PFAS through exposure pathways such as drinking contaminated water and eating contaminated fish and plants. Environmental exposure arguments augments the human exposure that potentially results from the use of PFAS containing consumer products and consumption of food packaged in PFAS containing materials. A check of the information on the website of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection revealed that the artificial turf studies that are posted there were published in 2010. PFAS is, was not among the artificial turf constituents that were identified then, which was before the current concern about PFAS and related chemicals. This raises the possibility of the need for additional inquiry to determine if PFAS containing artificial turf presents an environmental or public health risk. It is the policy of the Council to consider and respond to every citizen inquiry. At the Council's monthly meeting on June 25th, the email about the safety of artificial turf was brought before the Council. Council is aware that the, it is entirely the prerogative of Woodbridge to put down the artificial turf. In consideration of the citizens' request, Council determined an appropriate response would be alert the town to the fact there might be more contemporary studies to reference prior to a final decision on the matter. Sincerely, Peter Hearn, Executive Director, the Council on Environmental Quality. From um, Yuri Gamira and Anna Solokina, Sorry about the pronunciation. Um, the public hearing on the Amity Regional High School application for a permit to install the artificial turf field. We are Woodbridge residents greatly concerned with the plans of the Amity Regional High School District Number no. 5 for the replacement of the stadium field located at 25 Newton Road with a new stadium field containing dangerous chemicals known as particularly toxic for children. We have read all documentation and as an architect teaching environmental design and architecture school have reviewed drawings of the project submitted by a contractor. Children are uniquely vulnerable to harmful exposures from recycled rubber surfaces. Um, and it referenced a, a document from the Mount Sinai Hospital and their testimony. This 2018 document is attached, opposing applicants, Amity High School District and the contractor, outdated reference from 2010 to 2014. It is based on medical conclusion of, on extreme danger of products never to be used as services where children play, signed by the, Mount, the Director of Mount Sinai's Children's Environmental Health Center, recognized specialists of Department of Environmental Medicine and Public Health. Multiple studies have been conducted addressed in the 2019 to 20 publications and a site to a publication on the intercept.com. The MD High School Children's Health is at risk. 
due to toxicity of artificial turf containing the PFAS family of chemicals, a long-term damaging impact on the environment and community is paramount. This may lead to massive expenses for our town due to anticipated significant medical issues and lawsuits involving hundreds of school children's wellness for the observed future. Due to environmental contamination, decay of adjacent wetlands, the ecosystem and groundwater, these major spendings may require significant investments for our town to supply with central water a large number of properties located in proximity of stadium and school who currently use well water. Woodbridge residents call for a moratorium and Woodbridge Plan and Zoning Commission to strongly deny this application, which encounters a great wellness harm to hundreds of students, an avalanche of significant expenses, and a loss of moral and safety reputation for the town of Woodbridge. For the group of Woodbridge residents signed, again, um, Yuri Kamira and Anna Sokolina. Next, the, um, although, Chris, was this an attachment to their this was the attachment to their email. Okay, so I can skip this attachment. Yeah. Uh, I'll just note that attached to their email was some testimony from the Icon School of Medicine in Mount Sinai on a moratorium on use of school tire rubber. Um, there was also a position statement on use of recycled tires in artificial turf, surface, turf surfaces from the same um, Mount Sinai organization and a health based consumer guide also from Mount Sinai. All attached to that commenter and I apologize. It's quite a few attachments all and the intercept article was also attached. So please hold with me. All of those attachments will be found in the uploaded version of that public comment. Moving on, um, David Pretlove. Um, I'm a parent of a current Amity High School student, and I also have, I have also had two older children graduate from Amity. I have watched many sporting events at the high school, as well as many other schools around the state as a parent and as a referee of several high school sports. It is time to have a turf field at Amity. As mentioned, I travel all over the state and see the wonderful sporting environments provided by turf fields at most public and private high schools in Connecticut. In my view, there is often greater danger in playing on grass surfaces, which are often uneven, muddy, or dusty, and on turf surfaces, which are well-maintained, flat, and handle rainfall. In youth sports, I see the connection that is enabled when a town's younger sports players can play regularly at their town's high school. Our current high school fields cannot accommodate any outdoor youth teams beyond an occasional football game, and this hurts our community. Please allow my last child at Amity to experience playing on a turf field at Amity. David Pretlow. Pret Love Amity Parent. Next is um, from Anna Solokina, a separate comment. Um, I am dear uh, the commission and uh, Ms. Sullivan. I'm a Woodbridge resident since 2003 and with 400 Woodbridge residents that I know of, I am greatly concerned about the Amity High School District application for a permit to install the artificial turf field on our major stadium. One, I'm concerned at that the outdated reference from 2010 is used by the applicants in support of this application to install artificial turf of chopped old rubber tire material, which is of greater danger and harm to health and well-being of people, and particularly to children, who have no choice but to be exposed to toxic materials on the field during their high school year. During the decade from 2010 to 2020, a great number of medical and environmental research evidence that this toxic PFAS caused incurable diseases in humans Recent study reflected here, and there's a citation to an intercept article. Two, I'm concerned about the great danger for our AMD students whose health and wellness, this dangerous application is approved, might be forever harmed by our town's commissions and board of education's wrong decision. Three, I'm concerned that my taxes would go not towards improvement of our town, our roads, parks, in support of our small businesses and good government and heroic people, but towards lawsuits which will occur immediately after hundreds of students will enter the new field will continue emerging throughout entire life of this potentially damaged generation, as I'm aware of attorneys already being involved in this matter. Four, I'm concerned that our environment, our wetlands, which are now the lungs of the town, would be inevitably, inevitably contaminated and my taxes would go for supplying large number of properties with central water instead of preserving their healthy historical well water in a site to European countries plan to phase out toxic PFAS chemicals from the intercept.com. Five, I'm concerned that the voice of our Woodbridge parents and residents would not be heard and our family values and our belief 
in Woodbridge leadership and safety of our life here could be harmed forever. Um, please announce, morit announce a moratorium on this application. There are good alternative materials to be used for reconstruction of the stadium field. Sincerely, Woodbridge resident, Anna Solina, PhD. Next from Edward Burns, to whom it may concern, um, not in favor of Amity Field renovation. To whom it may concern, although I was not aware of this coming up again, I'm not in favor of replacing Amity's football field with artificial turf. One reason, and I feel most importantly, is that standing on an artificial field on a hot day feels a whole lot hotter than grass. The last time I stepped on an artificial turf field in the summer during a sunny day, I was amazed at how much heat seemed to be coming from the turf itself. I don't have a technical explanation for this, but I just wanted to share my thoughts on the subject. I was also disappointed how it read on the ballot. The field renovation part was barely mentioned. People who voted may not have been fully aware of what they were in fact voting for or against. People who did not vote may have had details. Who, people who did not vote may have if details had been more specific in the advertisements. Again, just my opinion based on what I personally witnessed. Sincerely, Edward Sperns. Amity Turf Fields from Daniel Lyons. Please don't delay the installation of the turf fields at Amity High School, the last public high school in the state of Connecticut without turf fields. I understand this is the same turf at Yale and Gillette Stadium, to name a couple of places. Any delay would be a complete sham and travesty. Why hold a vote at all if things aren't going to be honored? I would have to assume a delay would only be an independent benefit from putting their own intentions in front of the majority vote. Happy Fourth of July. Let's give these kids what they deserve. Best, Dan Lyons. Amity Field Improvements. Please uphold the vote and stop the delays. I'm sorry to the few Woodbridge residents who oppose the project. They lost the vote. Let's move forward from Frank Lee. Turf Field. Hey, Mrs. Sullivan, my name is Cameron Luciano. I'd like to inform you and everyone in attendance at the upcoming town meeting that the Amity High School Athletic Student Body specifically the football team, are overwhelmingly in support of the immediate installment of the turf field. Thank you for your time, Cameron Luciano, captain of the football team. In favor of new fields at Amity. As a lifelong Woodbridge resident and mother of two Amity athletes, I'm writing in support of the new athletic fields and sports complex at Amity. Amity is one of the best schools in the state with the worst athletic fields. Our student athletes deserve the chance to compete on a state-of-the-art facility and matches the same quality of education they are receiving. Please let the construction begin. Much thanks and gratitude for your support. Sincerely, Nancy Camarado Luciano. Planning and zoning meeting in Amity Track. Dear first select person Heller and others, I'm appalled that the towns of Woodbridge, Bethany, and Orange held a vote in December to support the referendum for Amity High School, and now attempts are being made to change the outcome of the referendum. While I believe that there is a process for change to be made, this woman is too late. But sadly, the Planning and Zoning Committee has bowed to her service for fear of public retribution. As a behavior specialist, I can tell you that the research on reinforcing child tantrums is what you're doing by allowing her to interrupt previously scheduled events. It results in a temporary interruption of the said tantrum while leading to an increase in future tantrums. We really want to allow the established political process to be changed forever going forward. I would hope not. I urge you to continue on as planned and allow the construction of the track and field to begin. If Mama Bear is not happy, I can find her a realtor who can help her sell her home so she can move to another district with antiquated field, track, etc. Thank you, Missy, um, Missy Olive, PhD. <clears throat> Opposition to the Amity Turf Field um, from Michelle Cohen. Hi, Beth and Chris. I've already spoken with both of you. You know I'm opposed to the field. I have concerns about PFAS. I have signed the petition requesting the three moratorium. Here's my opposition in email form right now to add whatever list and numbers you are keeping. Amity Fields agenda item from John Carneglo. Dear sir or madam, I respectfully request that this email be included in the discussion that is to take place before the PNZ on July 6, 2020. It has come to my attention that there will be a request from an individual in town to place a moratorium on the installation of turf fields set at the Amity High School. I only note that I'm opposed to such requests because it's being done at the 11th hour, and more importantly, contrary to the residents of Orange, Woodbridge, and Bethany. As you know, the surrounding towns voted in December of 2019 to approve this venture, and we were looking forward to its completion. Please note that I'm a proud parent with two children who attend the high school and play sports there, and strongly support the referendum that was approved by the residents of our three towns. 
Thank you for your time and attention. Very truly yours, John Caraneglo. Dear, uh, from Mohini Ranganathan. Dear Mrs. Ms. Sullivan, I'm a resident of the town of Woodbridge at 48 Newton Road. Uh, as you know, on July 6, 2020, there will be a closed hearing of the Woodbridge Planning and Zoning Commission on the Amity Regional High School application for a permit to install the artificial turf field to replace the Amity High School stadium field with, with new field containing dangerous chemicals known as particularly toxic for children. I'm writing to request a moratorium and for the Woodbridge Plan and Zone Commission to strongly deny this application at the meeting on July 6. This matter is of great concern to me with two school age children, very active in sports, who will attend Amity High School in the future. One is a current middle schooler. They will be potentially exposed to toxic chemicals if this proposal is implemented that they as children may be uniquely vulnerable to. We moved to the town of Woodbridge primarily to raise our children in this wonderful environment and send them to these excellent schools. It would be a shame for us to have to compromise our health in the bargain. This matter is also of added concern to me because of the location of my house, 48 Newton Road, that is very close to the Amity High School. Toxic PFAS, which are in the plastic grass and backing of the artificial turf, are known to travel easily and have a long history of ground and well water contamination. We in Woodbridge rely almost solely on well water and strongly urge the town and plan zoning commission to take the health of its citizens into account before approving this. Any in favor of the artificial turf field state that because this matter was, has been previously discussed at the BOE, it should be discussed no further. However, new and alarming information is now available on the risks associated with the toxic chemicals in the proposed plan. Thus, at the very least, a moratorium will permit evaluation of this new information before proceeding. As the current pandemic has taught us, health and safety is of paramount importance. I urge you to give this matter most diligent consideration. Sincerely, Mohini Ranganathan, MD. And this was entitled Request for Moratorium on the Plan to Install the Artificial Turf Field at AHF. Next, Amity Turf Field subject, John Quirker, Jr. This referendum has been voted and approved by a majority of vote from the citizens of this community Please proceed with completing this project respectively, respectfully, John Quirker, Jr. Subject, Amity High School Replacement Stadium Fields from Thomas Pisano. Subject, we must complete the fields ASAP. My name is Tom Pisano from Orange, Connecticut. I've been the resident, president of Orange Amity Soccer Association for 36 years. We have 600 soccer players in the three towns. We've been waiting for many, many years to have a high school field meet the needs of the parents and players. I've personally been involved in the building of fields at FWP in Orange. The fields are enjoyed by all soccer and lacrosse players from all three towns. If you ever visited Fred Wolf Park, you will see the effort was worth the pain to development. Our kids need this field now. We voted to complete this project. Do not delay the progress. Thank you for your consideration of the kids. I will copy all the registered players to see if my opinion is shared by all. Feel free to call me with any questions or concerns. Tom Pisano, Orange Soccer Association co-president. Subject matter, turf, Judy Swain. Swain family from Bethany supports the turf. Subject, Amity High School turf field support, from Michael Kosh. The Kosh family of Bethany support the Amity High School turf fields and have been, that have been voted for and approved last December. Trisha Kosh. Subject, comment for July 6th TPC meeting from Dr. Nancy Silverstein. I strongly disapprove of the construction of the artificial turf field at Amity Regional High School due to concerns regarding toxins such as lead and PFAS in the building material, which will affect the health and safety of our children, school staff and community, a direct contamination and contamination of our ground and drinking water. This will adversely affect both our citizens and our natural resources and environment. I urge you to review the information brought to you before the residents brought before you by both residents and experts in the field of crumb rubber science. Thank you, Dr. Nancy Silverstein. Subject, Amity football field, Fred Luciano. I'm sending this email in support of getting this project underway as soon as possible. I know there are people who are trying to derail the project three years to study certain aspects of the field. I just want to make sure that this project starts on time and finishes on time. This has been voted on already and approved by, and the few people who are causing uproar should not represent the majority of people who want this done today. Please accept this email support for getting this project moving right away. Please approve the plans, Fred Luciano from Woodbridge. 
July TPZ meeting comment from Bonnie Blake, the artificial turf installation in Amity. In light of new information regarding the potential health risks associated with this product, please hold off on installing it until further research can be done. Thank you, Bonnie Blake from Woodbridge. From Fran um, Ponchik, um, subject high school field. I disapprove of the construction of the artificial turf being put in for the high school fields due to the concerns of toxins and lead affecting the health and safety of our children and the environmental impact of the surrounding community. From Francine Schaefer Ponchik. Subject new turf from Tara Chismadia. My name is Tara Chismadia and I live in Orange. I support the new turf at Amity Regional High School. I have twins that will be sophomores. Thank you, Tara Chismadia. Subject comment for July 6 TPZ meeting from Max Silverstein. Hello, I am a lifelong resident of Woodbridge, a graduate of Amity Regional High School, including being a varsity athlete in multiple field sports. And I've been a property owner in town for the past decade. My property and the well in my drinking water is less than 2,000 feet, less than the length of seven football fields for those sports fans out there from the proposed artificial turf field at Amity Regional High School. My well draws from the watershed that the toxic runoff from the field will drain into, poisoning my family. I strongly oppose the construction of an artificial turf field at Amity Regional High School because of serious concerns about deadly toxins such as lead and PFAS in the building materials, which will negatively impact the health and safety of our kids, contaminate the drinking water of our families, and adversely affect our natural environment. The choice to move forward with the construction of an artificial turf field is a choice to purposefully poison and kill my family. Thank you, Max Silverstein of Woodbridge. Comment for July 6 TBZ meeting from Deborah Taubner. I'm writing to express my disapproval of the construction of the artificial turf field at the high school due to concerns about toxins like lead and PFAS in the building materials affecting the health and safety of our kids, contaminating our ground drinking water, and adversely affecting our natural environment. This is a complete waste of money in the short term, and the materials used will be a burden on our town in the long term when it starts to deteriorate and becomes a toxic cleanup site. My children use the fields during physical education classes, classes and for track practices, and I do not want them exposed these chemicals under any circumstances, grass is cheap, natural, and non-toxic. I urge you to reverse course immediately. Thank you, Deborah Taubner of Woodbridge. Regarding hearing on the MD High School District application for a permit to install the artificial turf field from Yuri Yamira, here Mrs. Sullivan, Robert Klee, and members of the TPZ. I'm a Woodbridge resident for almost 20 years, and with 400 plus other Woodbridge residents, I am greatly concerned about the MD High School District application for a permit to install the artificial turf field on our major stadium. I'm concerned about the great danger to, for our empty students whose health and wellness, if this dangerous application is approved, will be forever harmed by our town commissions and boards of education's wrong decision. I'm concerned that my taxes would not go towards improvement of our town, our roads, our parks, and support our small businesses and good government and our people, but towards lawsuits which will occur immediately after hundreds of students will enter the new field and will continue emerging throughout the entire life this potentially damaged generation. Please announce moratorium on this application and reevaluate the reconstruction of the stadium field with an alternative environmentally friendly materials widely available. Respectfully, Yuri Gamira. Comment for July 6 TPC meeting from Emily Melnick. Hi, Chris. I'm a homeowner at 50 in Woodbridge. My daughter is a student at Amity High School. I strongly approve. I strongly disapprove of the construction of the artificial turf field at Amity High School due to toxins like lead and PFAS in the building materials, which will adversely affect the health and safety of our kids, contaminating our ground and drinking water, and adversely affect our natural environment. Fields should be left as is, or other non-harmful substances such as organic cork infill should be used. Thank you for your consideration, Emily Melnick. Amity Sports Field referendum from Jess O'Connor. Dear Miss. Sullivan. It is with shock and disbelief that I even need to be writing you this letter as adults who are responsible for teaching our children right from wrong. What kind of message is it sending to the students of Amity School System that a small group of disgruntled residents of one town within the district who are unhappy with the outcome of our recent referendum can attempt to derail the process that was voted for by the majority of the citizens of this community? What are we saying to our kids that valid and legal voting processes don't count if you're unhappy with the uh, Outcome of an election, simply throw a tantrum and maybe you'll get your way. A rational thinking member of our community, this is truly absurd. As a parent of two Amity athletes, my husband, who has also been a coach at Amity throughout the last 21 years. Sorry. Um, where was I? Um, <laughs> last 21 years. Thank you. And I have been to countless high school 
my husband, and, and who has been a coach, and I have been to countless high school sports fields throughout Connecticut and never have seen another grass field. Many middle schools even have turf fields. The vast majority of districts have done extensive research on the subject to determine that turf fields are indeed safer for our student athletes. Have you ever watched a high school lacrosse game being played on a lacrosse field after a rain? Being that lacrosse season occurs during the rainy season of spring, I've had the displeasure of watching our players risk injury on a slippery, wet, muddy field. Additionally, playing on grass field puts our student athletes at a disadvantage, having not practiced on fields like those that they will be playing on during league play. Research has also shown that the turf field selected by Amity is safe for the environment. Shame on anyone who's indulging the small group of residents who are unhappy with the results of a district-wide referendum. Jess, Jess O'Connor. Jessica O'Connor, sorry. Subject, turf field at AMD High School from Mark Daddio. Dear sir or madam, you might be aware, but if not, I'd like to fill you in on a few things happening in an attempt to stop Amity from getting the turf field that was already voted on and approved. The turf field was part of a referendum vote in December on 2019, which also included a new track, LED lighting and poles, scoreboards and bleachers on field number three with ADA compliant walk. Groundbreaking for these projects was set to begin when school ended. The Third Citizens of Woodbridge recently started a petition to place a three-year moratorium on the turf field. Currently, they have obtained 360 signatures. They've distributed a five-page flyer and mailboxes throughout Woodbridge to try to derail the project. Unsolicited flyers placed in mailboxes illegal to be reported to the United States Postal Service. There's also been some questions how they obtained and sent unsolicited emails to numerous Woodbridge residents pushing their agenda. They have started a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for an attorney to help try to stop the fear. Amity spearheaded the research and held the referendum vote. When you look at the votes by town, Orange and Bethany approved the project while Woodbridge voted against it. The numbers clearly show the Amity community supports the track and turf improvements. Woodbridge citizens had their chance to speak out and vote against it, which they did. But again, the vote proved in favor of the turf. Let's hope this recent activity against the project doesn't stop progress. Amity spent countless hours speaking in each town board of finance, board of selectmen, board of education, and PTA, PTO meetings. All information was transparent. The petition states the wording on the ballot was misleading. However, there was public comment at all presentations where every question and concern was addressed and the referendum passed. The community voted yes. It would be very disappointing if Woodbridge had a second chance to attempt to halt the referendum. Amity administration completed thorough research on this project to choose the best and safest turf for our students and community. The same turf is now being used at the Yale Bowl and Patriot Stadium, among many. Does not contain lead or PFAS chemicals as the petition states. However, these chemicals have been found in our water, regularly tested, and meeting state um, federal guidelines as established by the US EPA. A three year turf study by the US EPA found that emissions of many of the organic chemicals in the air were found to be below detection limits or background levels, and that releases of metals into simulated biological fluids were very low. Schools, colleges, and professional athletics are installing turf to increase safety and extend play seasons. Grass is not always ready for play. Drainage, mud, ruts, and puddles make it uneven and susceptible to injuries. The turf field cancellations of games and practices due to wet fields will be almost zero. No cost for seeding, fertilization, watering, anti-pest, anti-fungal treatments to grass. No more renting fields for practice and trials because of unusable wet fields. Referendum will take our one sport, three levels grass field to a turf field where 18 teams can play. I encourage you to stop this injustice from occurring. Mark J. Diadio, DPM. DP and Z re artificial turf from Ellen Skeletar. Hi, Chris. We appreciate you know, So this one is, uh, yeah, there's a letter attached. Um, from Ellen Skeletar, we support for a moratorium on the MD High School artificial turf field. Dear Chairman Klee and members of the Town Planning and Zoning Commission, I write to associate myself with the petition which I and nearly 400 other Woodbridge residents have signed entitled 10 Reasons Why a Three-Year Moratorium on the Amity High School artificial turf field is necessary. There's no question that the artificial turf scheduled to be used in Amity High School ball fields is, at the very least, of questionable safety for our children. And beyond that, a well pose potential serious health effects for the wider Woodbridge population. Although I understand there may be jurisdictional questions concerning your commission's role on this issue, the issue is of sufficient significance that I would urge you at a minimum to continue the matter for further input and consideration. Thank you for your attention and for your service to our town, Ellen Skeletar. Re Amity High School Artificial Turf Field from Lale Ardishpur. 
here, uh, Ms. Sullivan. I'm one of the residents living in Woodbridge. I'm very concerned and I disapprove of the construction of the artificial turf field at the high school due to, due to about toxins like lead and PFAS in the building materials that will be affecting the health and safety of our kids. It will contaminate our ground and drinking water and adversely affecting our natural environment. I hope this important matter is taken into consideration from Lale Ardeshipur, Ardeshirpur of Woodbridge. Re-Amity Turf from Lauren Clark. Good morning. I'm writing to voice my approval for the turf fields that we as a community voted for last December. There was a lot of time and effort that went into this project. Personally took the time to research all the information provided. I'm an Amity parent of one child who just completed a difficult freshman year. His health and safety are always my main concern. My son is also an athlete and obviously, again, safety is our number one priority. I voted yes for this project and I wholeheartedly feel this vote should stand. There's ample time for questions and research prior to the vote and for someone to try to stop this now and has a history of doing so in another town is a really very manipulative move. Many, many athletes at our school will benefit from this much needed improved field. Our children have sacrificed an awful lot this year with the rest of the world. Please do, don't, don't delay this project. Sincerely, Lauren Clark of Orange. Um, so this is a letter from Beth Heller. Um, Um, dear Chairman Klee and members of the Town Planning and Zoning Commission, on March 9th, 2020, I sent a letter to be entered into the public record to the Woodbridge members of the, in, of the Amity Board of Education stating the following. In light of the recent pending legislation, House Bill 5300, which is an act establishing a moratorium on the installation of recycled tire rubber at municipal and public school playgrounds, which if enacted will establish a moratorium on the installation of crumb rubber ground covers at municipal and public school playgrounds, I would respectfully request that the Amity Board of Education vote to seek pricing for an alternative, such as the cork slash coconut material to the crumb rubber athletic field. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the legislative session was suspended in March, 2020, and no action has yet been taken on House Bill 5300, which is attached to this letter. Over the past week, I've been made aware that many Woodbridge residents have signed a petition asking that a moratorium be placed on the artificial turf field at Amity High School to address possible health concerns. While I recognize this issue may not directly fall under the jurisdiction of the Town Planning and Zoning Commission, sufficient areas of concerns have been raised by the petitioning individuals to require careful review by the Town Plan and Zoning Commission. The health and welfare of our residents and children should be not be jeopardized until the Commission has had sufficient opportunity to review both sides of the science involved in this issue. Accordingly, the Commission could delay a decision on the application until all information is reviewed, including the status of the bill pending before the Connecticut Legislature. Thank you for your consideration in this matter and for your service to our town. From Beth Heller, July 2nd, this one contained an attachment which was raised bill number 5300 from the Connecticut General Assembly's February session of 2020. Subject, moratorium on turf comments for public meeting from Lori Danzig. Dear Ms. Sullivan, I'm concerned with the health and environmental implications of chemicals leaching or resulting from a breakdown of artificial turf and the materials necessary for its installation. I support a moratorium on the installation of the turf until these health and environmental, i.e. water quality issues can be critically examined. Secondarily, in light of the strain that COVID-19 is putting on every educational system. I question the wisdom of putting our town dollars into artificial turf at this time when dollars might be better used elsewhere for our children's education. Respectfully, Lori Danzig, Danzig of Woodbridge. Regarding Amity High School replacement stadium fields from Thomas Pisano. Hi, my name is Tom Pisano. I'm a, I've been president of Orange Soccer for 36 years. Um, I've developed Red Wolf Park in Orange. We have 30 acres and fields of grass. I tell you firsthand, it's better to have a turf field than use all the chemicals to treat real grass. When in a turf field, you have a lot less chemicals entering the groundwater. We plan to have a turf field in lights of Red Wolf Park for all three towns to play on. These fields have been used for 30 years with no detrimental effects, and they've been proven to be safe beyond a doubt. The current Amity Stadium field is a sand-based soil design. Check out infill options for turf, the same sand infill can be used from Tom Pisano. 
support, support for the special permit for MD High School TPC meeting from Cleo and Theo Nicolakis. I'd like to express my support to approve the special permit for the excavation of the field at Amity High School to enable the district's approved new turf field and new track installation. As you know, this new construction project has been through extensive community outreach meetings and public hearings and past in the Amity district referendum and is essential for the safe enjoyment of athletic facilities for future generations. All my best, Cleo Nicolakis. <clears throat> Next is a letter um, from Jack Kurek, the acting chairman of the Woodbridge Inland Wetlands Agency. So dear members of the Town Plan and Zoning Commission, attached please find the pertinent pages of the minutes of the Inland Wetlands Agency from February 19th, 2020, regarding the determination by members of the Inland Wetlands um, Agency that no permit for replacement of the high school stadium field was required by the Inland Wetlands Agency and also the pertinent pages of the minutes of the Inland Wetlands Agency meeting of May 20th, 2020, postponed until June 3rd, 2020, where the I Inland, sorry, Inland Wetlands Agency members reaffirmed that no permit was required from the Inland Wetlands Agency for the replacement of the high school stadium field. Lastly, attached is a copy of the permit issued by the Inland Wetlands Agency for the new pole vault area at the high school. Sincerely, Jack Curick, acting chairman, and so attached to this letter dated July 1, where the um, minutes of the meeting of the Inland Wetlands Agency from February 19th, 2020, and the minutes from the regular meeting of May 20th, 2020, that was postponed until June 3rd, and a, a copy of the permit regarding the pole vault area was also attached. Okay, um, next TPZ meeting on Monday from Mary Gorham. Hi, Chris, I'm very concerned to learn that since the referendum approving the placement of AstroTurf on the MD High School football field, there's been additional evidence indicating potential environmental hazards from leaching of the rubberized and plastic materials of the AstroTurf into the groundwater. With so many houses directly surrounding the field uh, or downriver from that area, each dependent on their homes well water for their drinking water. This presents a potential big health risk to residents and a big financial liability to the town. My understanding is the TPZ will be meeting this coming Monday evening and a decision will be made as to whether to allow the project to begin Tuesday morning. In light of this potential health risk to residents and financial risk to the town, I urge you to hold the hearing open and delay the groundbreaking until such time as an independent professional environmental engineer, not connected with the company, with the contract, and further assess the risks and the Quinnipiac Valley Health Department can do an independent baseline test of the groundwater. An independent assessment then shows there is no health risks to the surrounding wells. And if the Quinnipiac Valley Health Department does the baseline test of the water, then it seems it would be appropriate for the project to go forward. Or if the independent assessment shows there is in, are indeed legitimate risks that were not previously known, and this information should be given to the Amity Board of Education so they might consider making appropriate modifications using a cork and corn husk fill instead of rubber fill. Then, and then later, should the AstroTurf be installed, the baseline test from the Quinnipiac Valley Health Department done before the installation would give the town the data it needed to compare to when later tests were done to assess the AstroTurf's environmental impact a year from now. So in summary, I urge you to delay the groundbreaking until such time as an independent environmental engineer can make an assessment. And, Q and the Quinnipiac Valley Health Department can do a baseline test of the groundwater there. Any thanks in advance for your consideration. Please forward this letter to the rest of the TPZ for their consideration as well. In addition, please let me know if there will be a public comment portion of Monday's meeting. Thank you in advance. Mary Gorham of Woodbridge. Support for approved turf field at Amity High School from John Scott. Afternoon, I'm a proud Amity parent. I'm surprised to hear there's a group attempting to derail the turf field project at Amity High School. How can a project that has already been voted for and received approval by the town residents now be possibly sidelined? I hope that you have your, I hope that we have your full support to see that this project moves forward and is not delayed for a three year moratorium. I understand that these are uncertain times. However, this is the perfect time for a project like this to take place. I hope the concerned Amity parents have your full support to follow through with this plan and see that it moves forward with fidelity. I'm going to take a drink of water. That was our first 
package. Um, Chris, do you estimate that's about half of them? That's half of the um, comments that we've got. And then we have a stack um, from two residents who have done the um, primary submission of um, support materials for their okay. position. And when we get to those, there'll be like a cover email probably on those and then I'll There's just- There's a cover email listing the attachments and then all of the attachments, except when they were links to YouTube or whatever, have been um, copied and will get posted on the website tomorrow morning because it took a long time to scan all this stuff. Okay. So that took me about 45 minutes. Um, so uh, unless anyone else on the commission has any objections i'm just gonna go forward again or jed rob which stack or which p or chris which pdf is he going through next um now he's going through the things that have come in oh i see i got okay the the first stack that he did was the stack that i scanned and sent out to everyone on yeah. thursday after four what he's gonna read now is um the emails that came in from after four on Thursday. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> and thank you both. You gave my me a chance to drink some water. Um, all right, I'll begin again, uh, or I'll continue, sorry. Uh, Turf Field from Peter Gaifman. Hello, as you know, Amity is a tri-town school district that serves the children from Woodbridge as well as Orange and Bethany. Therefore, when there was a question about allocating budget funds for improvements to out wolf to our woefully inadequate athletic facilities and fields, all three towns had a vote. The vote was in favor of the improvements proposed. It's shameful, therefore, that one small group of people with very loud voices can undermine the transparent democratic process. The plan was made public a long time ago and stood up to the scrutiny of the people as well as planning and the committee. Please allow our vote to stand and our kids to finally have athletic facilities we can all be proud of. Respectfully, Peter Gaifman, resident of Orange and father of two Amity student athletes. Turf field support from Christina Wethington. Good evening. As a Woodbridge resident, a parent of two student athletes in the district, and an Amity alum who was captain of the girls' track team, I would like to express my strong support for the proposed new Amity turf field. I believe the new turf field and proposed enhancements to the track, lighting, scoreboard, and bleachers represent a much needed investment in our school and our community. Thank you for your consideration. Go Spartans. Be well, Christina Conti Webbington, class of 93. Amity's new turf field from John O'Keefe. Honorable First Selectman Heller and Ms. Sullivan and all board members, it has come to my attention that after our three towns voted on this referendum and it passed by a majority of voters, Someone disagrees with the democratic process. Same person had issues with her former town of North Haven building a turf field also and did everything she could to stop construction. North Haven built the turf field despite her concern. I've heard she has illegally used people's mailboxes to distribute pamphlets supporting her cause. I'm asking you to please not let this minority of people disrupt the democratic process. Thank you for your time. Best regards, Don O'Keefe from Orange. Letter from Kevin Schuster. Um, there's an attached letter from Kevin Schuster of um, the Yale School of Medicine, MD. Members of the committee, I take the time to write with great concern regarding the installation of a turf field at the Amity High School. As a physician, I am concerned with the, for the safety of athletes, including my own children, who, who may be asked to play on a field that at its surface is 20 to 30 degrees hotter than a natural grass field. We've all seen the reports in the lay press over recent years of scholastic athletes dying of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. That increased heat to the field of play seems counterintuitive to me. Risk of injury on turf has long been the myth and legend of professional athletes. However, we now have reasonably good scientific evidence that these anecdotal injuries blamed on turf are likely true. This has led professional female soccer players from around the world to rally against the plan to play their World Cup games on turf something the men did not have to endure. Famously, Tom Brady asked to have the turf field at Gillette Stadium replaced with grass. I'm also at a loss to explain the concept that we would allow 40,000 tires that would not be accepted at a landfill in Connecticut to be discarded directly into our environment. 
recent revelation, revelation that these fields also release polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, known toxins to humans into the environment further raises the stakes with regard to installation of this field. We're also in the midst of the worst public health crisis of our lifetimes, which threatens our way of life and may change school and sports for the foreseeable future. It's unclear when our student athletes will be able to return to the field of play. For all these reasons, I am sure you will carefully consider your obligation to protect the citizens and student athletes of Woodbridge from this clear and present danger and impose a waiting period for a complete analysis of the potential harms and benefits. Best regards, Kevin M. Schuster, MD, MPH from Woodbridge. High School Turf from um, Melissa Shear. Please do not allow the turf to be built at the high school. I voted against it. We'll never support the use of toxic chemicals around any child. Newer studies reflect the mortifying dangers to our community and need, we need to stop this. Please allow a moratorium for the sake of our children. Thank you, Melissa Shear. Town Planning and Zoning Commission Amity District application from David Schneider. Um, Ms. Sullivan, oh, there's a letter from David Schneider, sorry. Um, David Schneider to the Town Planning and Zoning Commission. Dear Commission members, my wife Virginia Schneider and I, Woodbridge residents, request that you deny the application filed by the AMD School District. The issue before you is whether to grant the special exception requested by the district pursuant to the zoning regulations 3.3N. The highlighted words are important. Special exception is highlighted. Zoning regulations allow earth material movement of limited amounts. If a landowner wants to move more than that, it must have an exception. In this case, it appears the school district wants to move 7.5 times the earth material that the zoning regulations generally allow. The exception has to be for a special reason. Given the magnitude of what the district seeks, the need must be very special. There's nothing special about what the district wants. It's not claiming hardship or the like. It simply wants to replace a football field with a football field. The zoning regulation 3.3N1 general requires the commission in making its decision on a request for a special exception to prevent damage to property and to protect public safety, health, and general welfare. Of course, after the fact, the resident who has had his well water destroyed or the person who suffers cancer from the artificial turf could sue the school district for damages. However, that is little of little consolation for those without clean water or for those who have become seriously ill. It is the obligation of this commission to protect people and property before harm is done. The district has not provided a sufficient reason for this commission to grant a special exception. The application should be denied. Sincerely yours, David W. Schneider. ENZ meeting from James O'Connor. Dear Mr. Sullivan, or sorry, Ms. Sullivan, I appreciate you and the committee taking the time to accept written notes. The Planning and Zoning Commission has an important mission to support the town of Woodbridge and its vision. I implore you to make sure that the Amity field renovations follow all of your policies and regulations, but do not succumb to propaganda and misinformation. The Amity School District has followed the appropriate rules for a bonding project, and our three towns had their say in voting. Majority voting for approval, and the time is the majority voted for approval, and the time is now for the project to go forward. This has been part of the public dialogue for six months, and they've had ample time to gain information that doesn't exist. And this last minute attempt to stop a legal and appropriate project should not be supported. This attempt by a vocal few is trying to circumvent procedures and I ask you to vote on the project and its merits. Longtime Orange resident and a parent of two Amity students, who are, are, we are the last district to have a synthetic field. We have taken steps to use the best contractor and choice of turf. Thanks, Jim O'Connor. Um, testimony on behalf of um, the Children's Environment Health Center at Mount Sinai, there's attached testimony. So I will read the testimony, um, but not the other attachments, which there are a few attachments to this. To Chairman uh, Robert Clee and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, I'm an assistant professor in the Environmental Medicine and Public Health at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. As a public health professional with expertise in children's health and the environment, I caution against the use of artificial turf based on the known presence of harmful chemicals, risk of exposure to extreme heat, and lack of sufficient evidence of safety. Our team of pediatricians and scientists receive frequent inquiries from concerned communities regarding the wide-scale use of artificial turf surfaces on school grounds and in park properties. Our continuous review of the risks and benefits of artificial playing surfaces shows significant gaps in the evidence supporting the safety of artificial turf products. Our findings are summarized below and are discussed in detail in the attached documents, Artificial Turf, a Health-Based Consumer Guide, 
position statement on the use of recycled tires in artificial turf sources, and artificial turf and children's health infographic. So those attachments I'm not going to read, but they are referenced. Children are uniquely vulnerable to exposures that may be experienced on turf fields. Their higher surface area to body mass ratio and decreased capacity for sweating increases vulnerability to heat injuries. Children put their hands in their mouths, are closer to the ground, and breathe faster than adults, leading to increased ingestion and inhalation exposures. Their developing organ systems are more easily perturbed. Detoxification systems are immature, and they have more future years of life over which chronic diseases may develop. Chemical exposures on turf may occur through inhalation, ingestion, skin, and open wound. Recycled rubber contains chemicals known to be linked to cancer, such as styrene, butadiene, benzothiazole, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, as well as heavy metals like cadmium and lead, long known to be toxic to the development to the developing nervous system. Biomonitoring studies to assess whether these chemicals enter children's bodies during play have not been conducted. We know far less about the composition of recycled rubber alternatives, making it impossible to determine the safety of these products. Extremely few studies have been have examined the have examined the composition and safety of alternative infills, including those purported to be quote natural. Analyses conducted by Mount Sinai and the Toxic Use Reduction Institute found the presence of known carcinogens and neurotoxins, including polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or PAHs, lead, zinc, and black carbon black carbon in almost all alternative infill materials examined. Few studies have assessed potential chemical exposures from the artificial grass blades and vacuum materials used on synthetic playing fields, regardless of infill type. A recent study identified perfluoroalkyl chemicals, or PFOS, a class of chemicals linked to numerous health problems, including cancer, nervous system toxicity, immune dysfunction, thyroid and cardiovascular disease, and the plastic grass blades and the backing used on artificial turf. PFAS are persistent pollutants that have been shown to contaminate wetlands and drinking. These findings raise concern about PFAS groundwater contamination from turf fields runoff and emphasize the need for further examination of exposures that may occur from turf components other than infill. Our conclusion that studies have not adequately demonstrated the safety of artificial turf playing fields is echoed by the Connecticut Department of Public Health, United States Environmental Protection Agency, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and Consumer Product Safety Commission. Connecticut Public Department of Public Health 2015 fact sheet on turf states, quote, the 2010 RICS assessment of five artificial turf fields in Connecticut does not provide conclusive evidence about the safety of artificial turf fields. There's still uncertainty and additional investigation is one. Likewise, the US EPA, CDC, and the CPSC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, launched a federal study into the safety of artificial turf Stating existing studies do not comprehensively evaluate the concerns about the health risks from exposure to tire crumb. Although the focus of the federal study is recycled tire crumb rubber, a 2016 EPA status report found research on the alternative, alternative infills such as EPDM and TPE to be lacking or limited. Complete findings of these studies have not been published. Adequate safety assessment requires studies that include biomonitoring to determine children's chemical and heat exposure under realistic play conditions. Still, the findings of such studies are available and conclusively demonstrate the safety of artificial turf services. We recommend the moratorium on the use of these materials where children play. For the reasons cited above and in the attached documents, I urge you to maintain natural grass fields and animals. Please let me know if I can answer any questions. Sincerely, Sarah Evans, PhD, MPH, Assistant Professor, at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Then attach or the and attached and will be uploaded or have already been uploaded to the website or the position statement on use of recycled tires and artificial turf services, artificial turf, a health-based consumer guide. And I think the last one is the uh, there's and there's a um, fact sheet um, on artificial turf, again, from the Children's Environmental Health Center at Mount Sinai Institute. Okay. Subject, support turf fields from Christy Woldridge. Good evening, I'm writing to show my support for the turf field project, which was voted on in December 2019. 
I hope those opposing this project are not being considered. It's too late. They had plenty of time to address their unsupported concerns. Any of us took time out of our busy lives to devote in support of this. This is a democracy and the votes were in vast support of the upgrades. I have two children, one of which will be entering Amity High School in the fall. I look forward to watching my children play on the turf fields. Thank you for your time. Subject, request for moratorium on the installation of artificial turf at Amity High School and denial of application from um, Fran and Paul, um, Paul Silverman and Francis Vecchio and Vincent Silverman. Dear Ms. Sullivan, we are residents of um, 7 Old Mill Road in Woodbridge near Amity High School. We are, we are writing to request a moratorium on the decision to install artificial turf at Amity High School and to ask the Woodbridge Plan and Zoning Commission to deny this application. Since the vote to install this turf is our understanding that new information has come out that exposes more dangers associated with this product. Therefore, it seems reasonable to have a moratorium on the turf installation until further safety evaluation can we also request that if alternative materials are considered, though made from nutshells, not be considered. One of our family members has a life-threatening allergy to nuts, and we do not want to risk having the risk of having nut particles um, enter our well water supply. Thank you for considerations of our concerns. Sincerely, Paul Silverman, Francis Vecchio, Vincent Silverman of Woodbridge. Subject, turf. From Marie Robert. Um, I, Marie Robert, MD of uh, 586 AMD Road in Woodbridge, oppose the immediate construction of the artificial turf field because of the numerous health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project, including the possibility of PFAS contamination of Woodbridge water and soil. As a physician and professor of pathology and medicine at Yale University School of Medicine, I'm concerned with the issues raised on the safety and long term consequences to the health of our children and our community. There's no emergency requiring the construction, rather proper investigations are in order prior to taking action. Marie Robert, MD. Subject turf from Sasha Golovian. To whom this may concern, I live on Cornfield Lane right near the high school fields. This could mean toxins going in my and my kids drinking water. The fact that this was voted on behind closed doors during a pandemic is, not, is just not comprehensible to me. There's evidence that points to these fields being carcinogenic and many other detrimental things. I don't care how fast, et cetera, the high school kids run on it. If I was one child to get cancer, then the town has just taken a life away. I plan to take every action I can against the town, putting in this turf if the town proceeds to put this in and put my child in danger. This must not go in. Also, the COVID thing isn't going anywhere. Uh, to spend money on this now is ludicrous. You don't know if these kids will ever run on these fields in the foreseeable future. Until there's a vaccine, COVID is here to stay. This is just irresponsible. Sasha Golovian, concerned parent. Reamity Turf from Rich Clark. Good morning. My name is Richard Clark. I'm writing in to express my support of the Amity Turf Project. This was voted in Back in December by the Amity community and should stand. Thank you for taking the time to read my email. Sincerely, Richard Clark of Orange. No to artificial turf um, from Kirsten Turcos. I'm writing to express my great concern about the installation of the artificial turf field at Amity High at Amity High School. My husband and I voted no to the proposal in November, and we were surprised that the voters were not given more information about the materials in question prior to the vote. Due to this lack of communication, among other reasons, I am requesting that the Woodbridge Planning and Zoning Commission deny the permit to install the fields. This project poses a huge threat to the health of our children and the environment. See link below. More research needs to be done to understand the risks. Thank you for your time and consideration. It's my hope that the town government considers the health of the community members, says no to the artificial turf field. And there's a link, what looks like a link to the um, General Assembly's website. Amity High School Fields from David Cantor. I'm a 20 year Woodbridge resident who has been raised two children to adulthood in this beautiful nature filled town. I'm emailing you to request that you do not consider installing artificial PFAS filled materials at our fields. Risks to individuals in the nearby wells and aquifers simply do not justify responsible people supporting this change. I urge you not to create a problem where there is none now. Thank you for acting with common sense and be well. David Cantor from Woodbridge Committee. Football field from Abby Scott. 
Hello, my property abuts the high school football field. I'm extremely concerned about the entire project, the light pollution, the noise pollution, of course, the increased toxins that the artificial turf represents. The entire area east and south of the football field is a boggy wetlands. In springtime, anyone who has tried to walk across the baseball fields know this all too well. A walk down the church driveway will show you acres of wetlands into which the football field drains. Likewise, the open space on North Pease is a bog that floods each spring, as do parts of my property, and that of my neighbors who adjoin Amity on the South Peak. Same spots filled with water after every rain should tell you that the water table is high. As you know, almost everyone in Woodbridge is on a well, so this is a matter of public health and should be, of cons be a concern to all residents as well as the governmental organizations tasked with protecting the public wheel. The high school and the football field are already a source of noxious pollutants. The audio speakers are pointlessly aimed at the neighborhood houses. The high school has added many lights in recent years that shine all night and sometimes all day, which do nothing but cause light pollution and waste energy. Is there any data to show a direct correlation between a reduction in crime and the addition of light? If not, I suggest taking them down or turning them off. Empty buses run around town every morning and afternoon while hundreds of cars transport children to school. Why can't they just take the bus? It would be far more environmentally sound. Students throw their trash made up of fast food bags, beer cans, mini bottles of liquor, and soda bottles filled with urine or tobacco spit into the neighborhood. They speed as they come and go with the mindless fury of the young. Who knows what pesticides and herbicides are applied to those green fields, the perfection of which speaks to the cultish and pointless obsession with athletics and disregard for the natural approach. What amazes me is the administration seems to spend so much effort keeping the community off high school property with their fake video surveillance and silly sign. Their energies are misplaced as they should understand <coughs> that neighbors have a vested interest in the well-being of the campus. What is the point of alienating a <coughs> the immediate community when, as we all know, it takes a village to raise a child? I used to feel a responsibility to keep an eye on the property, but I'm much less inclined to do so with the recent advent of the heavy-handed fake warnings that make Amity seem more like a prison than a publicly funded place of learning, which has been paid for by the citizens, by right and definition by the people and for the people. <clears throat> um, I may be missing a page, Chris. Um, well, or maybe it's slightly cut off, but I'll just read what I got. To expect they can do better once in possession of a toxic cesspit for a football field and a real stadium. I do not have confidence that they hold the health and well-being of the students or the community as a priority. Why should they be able to make narrow-minded choices that have the potential for wide-ranging public health and quality of life impact without meeting a very high standard of proof about safety and efficacy for all? Why do they get to act as if they're not a governmental organization with public responsibilities and accountabilities that extend beyond the basic transmission of social norms and knowledge? On this 4th of July, I leave you with the words of our founding fathers, Tom, one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, care of human life and happiness and not their destruction is the first and only object of good government. Please take this guidance to heart and stop all efforts to introduce more toxins and pollutants at Amity. Sincerely, Catherine Scott. Amity High School Field from Michael Crane. Hello, I'm an orange resident at um, Tallman Road, 426 Tallman Road. My family has three kids who will go through Orange and Amity schools, and I'm emailing in support of the installation of the turf field at Amity High. I also recognize that the education budget will be scrutinized substantially due to additional costs expected from the fallout of the pandemic. I hope you have a happy 4th of July. Best regards, Michael Crane. No subject from R.P. Serrano. Hi, my name is R.P. Serrano. I live, I live at 438 Tallman Road in Orange, and I am for the turf installation at the Amity Fields. Next is, um, subject is, I support a three-year moratorium on the installation of artificial turf field at Amity High School from Matthew Cohen. Dear members of the Woodbridge Town Plan and Zoning Commission, I, Matthew Cohen, residing at 16 Millhaven Road in Woodbridge, Connecticut, support a three-year moratorium on the installation of an artificial turf field at Amity High School. An artificial turf field would be uneconomical. An artificial turf field would be unhealthy. And official presentations preceding the referendum on an artificial turf field and the referendum itself were misleading. Numerous cost comparisons conclude that replacing an athletics field's natural grass with artificial turf introduces not only the anticipated high cost to install it, 
but also unexpected increased annual costs to maintain it and recurrent high costs to replace it every eight to 10 years. There are also costs to our health. Many clinical studies conclude that playing on artificial turf field increases the risk of acute skin injury and infection, orthopedic injury, traumatic brain injury, and heat stroke. Playing on or living near an artificial turf increases the long-term risk of disease from countless toxins present on its surface and introduced into the local land, air, and water supplies. More recently, purin polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS, have been identified in the synthetic grass-like blades and backing of artificial turf. PFAS are a class of synthetic forever chemicals that contaminate and persist in our environment, bioaccumulate in our bodies, and cause numerous health problems in humans, including immune suppression, thyroid disease, infertility, premature birth, increased cholesterol, obesity, and cancer. With all of these disturbing discoveries, programs now exist at the international, federal, and state levels to reduce human exposure to PFAS. One year ago, Governor Ned Lamont established the Connecticut Interagency PFAS Task Force to prevent PFAS pollution and decrease disease due to PFAS. Hope that Woodbridge will respect our mandate. Furthermore, the Amity Bond referendum on December 4th, 2019 for various athletic facility improvements in Amity Regional High School, as well as the slide presentation produced by the Amity Regional School District Number 5 to remote these projects included a, quote, all-weather field. I suspect this euphemism for artificial turf promoted by the industry was selected to hide its manufactured materials from unsuspecting voters. Had the referendum accurately described the proposed athletic field as artificial turf or even synthetic turf with a recycled tire crumb rubber infill, conserved Woodbridge voters would have shown up at the polls in greater numbers, and the Amity voters would have rejected the referendum as we had in the past. In conclusion, irrefutable evidence is mounting that both the short term and in the long term, an artificial turf field would be bad for our budget and harmful to our health. Therefore, I support a three year moratorium on the installation of an artificial turf field at the Amity High School. Please give our elected executives, public health administrators, conservation commission, and private citizens of Woodbridge the additional time we deserve to reconsider the risks of replacing our athletic stadium's natural grass, grass field with artificial turf and recycled tire crumb rubber infill. Sincerely yours, Matthew E. Cohen, MD of Woodbridge. Crumb rubber fields from Nikhil Petrov. Hello, committee members of Woodbridge Planning and Zoning. I'm a rising eighth grader at Amity middle school in Bethany. I heard that the high school is going to install a crumb rubber field and use this for physical education class and for several sports. I've heard several times in the past that these types of fields have toxic PFAS in the crumb rubber, ones that cause serious health problems, including cancer. This outrages me how the school would put our lives in danger just for the false sense of prestige of saying that we play on a turf field. An upgrade to the athletic field is supposed to make it safer to play on, but these fields contain lead, which can cause neurological problems. I am an athlete, one who plays baseball and basketball. I do not want my life to be endangered in the future, so please take this note into consideration. Thank you. Um, from Nikhil Petrov of Woodbridge. Let re, uh, letter from Woodbridge residents for TPZ meeting re artificial turf field from Basil Petrov. Dear Woodbridge TPC members, thank you for your service to our town. I'm against the installation of the artificial turf field with crumb tire rubber infill and support the moratorium on its immediate construction. The perceived benefits of a better or superior artificial turf field playing surface are very insignificant when compared to the possible health and financial damages the chemicals contained in this field cause to our children, residents, groundwater, ground and drinking water, and the town overall. The town of Woodbridge prides itself on the way we preserve nature, dumping 40,000 carcinogen leaching tires in the middle of our oasis. It's like Ben and Jerry's installing oil dr drilling rigs at every store. Regards, Vasily Petrov of Woodbridge. Um, TPC meeting read from Rubber Phil. Um, and this was forwarded um, from Beth Heller, actually. So. Um, dear Beth, I'm writing to you as a citizen of Woodbridge, a wife, a mother, and our duly elected first select person. I implore you to help us find a safe field material for all season sports fields slated to be installed at Amity High School. As you know, there's a group of Woodbridge residents that are concerned regarding the choice of crumb rubber artificial turf. I refer to those who have spoken out publicly, written e letters, emails, signed petitions, and donated to GoFundMe. While we support the installation of the field, a safe alternative must be identified and used. 
The rationalization of, quote, who was voted on, therefore we must proceed, makes no sense when one considers the volumes of well-researched and well-documented science regarding this material. Please recognize that most people did not realize that by voting for the field, they were votes being counted as a vote for a toxic film material. As you know, many towns are facing the same dilemma, and in the end, financially and morally, the safest choice is the best choice. Safety of our children and families is at stake. The aquifer and our water supply is in jeopardy. Residents of Woodbridge have always been excellent stewards of our town, its people, and our resources, and now it is not the time to change that attitude of protecting what is so important to us and future generations. Um, it is slightly cut off on my copy, um, Chris, um, but I will continue. Um, I um, continue to wonder how the town will be able to defend itself against litigation with, in the future when our children and families fall ill and our wells are poisoned. Additionally, I'm dismayed and disappointed at how the town of Woodbridge is handling the upcoming TPC meeting. Under the guise of COVID virus precautions, public comment will not be allowed. In addition to eliminating our actual voices, apparently counsel and expert testimony will not be allowed either. I understand that letters and emails are to be read, but also recognize that they represent but a minuscule portion compared to an open meeting people could elect to speak publicly. There's absolutely no reason for this portion of the meeting not to be delayed until the people of Woodbridge can be heard in person. The town is shaming itself by shutting down the voices of its citizens. Beth, this is not the time for silence or acquiescence. We desperately need your active help, that your voice be our voice, stand up for the safety and well-being of our town. Sincerely, Dr. Nancy Silverstein. The Amity Turf Field from Jen Moffitt. I'm writing to show my support for the turf field at Amity High School. I'm an Amity alum and also the parent of two current Amity High School student athletes. The turf field was approved by proper channels and should be built. Our kids deserve this, Jen Moffitt. Oppose artificial turf from Miriam Gohara. I, Miriam Gohara, oppose the immediate construction of the artificial turf field because of the numerous health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project, including the possibility of PFAS contamination of Woodbridge water and soil. Miriam Gohara of Woodbridge. Regarding artificial turf field from Earl Lusak. Um, I, Earl Lusak of 586 Amity Road, Woodbridge, oppose the construction of the artificial turf field because of the health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project, including the possibility of PFAS contamination of Woodbridge water and soil. The history of similar fields raised on the safety of and long-term consequences to the health of our children and our community. There's no urgency during the construction, rather proper investigations are in order prior to taking action. I'm Earl Glusak, MD, Professor of Pathology and Dermatology at Yale. Um, it looked like that included a attachment um, to the change.org petition. Please use this letter for the July 6 TPZ meeting regarding the MD turf field from Michelle Cohen. Dear members of the Woodbridge Town Plan and Zoning Commission, my name is Michelle Cohen. I reside at 16 Millhaven Road in Woodbridge. I have signed and supported the petition calling for a three year moratorium on the installation of an artificial turf field in high school. I'm writing because I have serious concerns regarding artificial turf fields. The artificial turf industry has successfully manufactured a need for its hazardous product, recognized as a cost effective, versatile, and more durable field requiring less maintenance compared to a grass field. It was to be the, the was to be the missing jewel in Amity's athletic crown as the sole high school and district reference groups A and B without an artificial turf field. Amity deals with this competitive disadvantage by renting artificial turf time for its players to practice on prior to games and tournaments. Having our own tur artificial turf field would level the playing field and expand turf time for many teams, classes, and other groups. This would be wonderful except that toxic and carcinogenic chemicals leach from both the crumb rubber infill and the plastic grass carpet. Crum rubber is a petrochemical polymer. It is basically a plastic that does not decompose, but rather degrades into smaller and smaller plastic bits and make their way into organisms in the food chain. Studies confirm that crumb rubber contains at least 11 known intrinsic carcinogens, onto which potentially dangerous herbicides, algaecides, fungicides, and bactericides may be applied. Plastics absorb and release chemicals as the crumb rubber spreads from the field into its surroundings, so do the toxins. Additional crumb rubber infill must periodically be added to replenish the infill continually contaminating surrounding soil and water. Some school districts have substituted safer coconut or cork infill for crumb rubber. Unfortunately, these environmentally friendly or alternative fills do not mitigate the toxins from the artificial turf itself. 
So our official carpet contains numerous toxic compounds, including PFAS. These forever chemicals do not naturally break down. They bioaccumulate in organisms and cause cause cancer and nervous system toxicity, decreased fertility, immune dysfunction, and thyroid and cardiovascular disease. Growing awareness and concern about PFAS toxicity prompted Governor Lamont to create the PFAS Task Force, which released an action plan in November 2019 to minimize exposure to PFAS, clean up current sources of PFAS pollution. We now know that artificial turf fields leave significant amounts of PFAS, so installing one would be a brazen violation of the state directive with unlimited liability. I followed the controversies surrounding our turf, artificial turf fields for years and voted against them in prior referendum. My educational and professional background is in biology with research experience in molecular biology and environmental toxicology. I'm a Connecticut certified professional educator endorsed in biology grades 7 through 12. 2018, I joined the Woodbridge Sustainability Committee and began as chair last summer. Yet it was only at the Amity High School PTSO meeting last October that I learned about the true nature or lack thereof of of the quote all something all weather field and then i've lost a line or two in the switch between pages continues an opportunity lost to confirm that amity voters knew that the athletic field proposed was artificial and were informed of its hazards i'm aware that amity administrators gave public presentations to the amity community regarding the pending referendum funding various athletic facility improvements However, I found it curious that no Beecher Road school parent with whom I spoke was aware of the new athletic field with the artificial turf, which they all opposed. I've since learned that the presentation into the Beecher Road school PTO was canceled and never rescheduled. Even if my letter of concern is too little too late, a cautionary tale, or my lessons in civics and politics, I appreciate this unexpected opportunity for comment. Although this referendum was an amity vote, the high school sits squarely in Woodbridge and has potential to pollute our soil, water, and wells. In light of the concerns regarding crime, rubber, infill, and artificial turf toxins, PFAS in particular, I support a three-year moratorium on the installation of any artificial turf field in the Amity School District. It would be a shame if the legacy of Amity's referendum leaves us with a level playing field that harms our health. Respectfully, Michelle Cohen of Woodbridge. Artificial turf field at Amity High School from Nancy Shattuck. Dear Christine, I'm a longtime Woodbridge resident whose property abuts the high school. There have been many changes at the high school property over the years, but none have concerned me as much as the possible installation of an artificial turf at the football field. Potentially negative health, environmental, legal, and financial ramifications for the town, school district, residents, wild, wildlife, water, and environment are myriad, long-lasting, and serious. And it makes no sense to me why this would be done without adequate investigation into the potential risks. Spending so much time at home during these pandemic days has only made me appreciate how lucky I am to live in a beautiful, such a beautiful and relatively safe and healthy town. I'd like Woodbridge to stay this way. I don't want to see my property value and water quality deteriorate. Like many residents, I've enjoyed walking at the track and through the grounds in recent days. I would stop with the installation in the field as I wouldn't want to risk exposure to toxic chemicals and micro pieces of plastic. I'm requesting that the special exception permit for the artificial turf be denied and a three-year moratorium on the construction of the artificial turf field be initiated to allow for evaluation of the risks associated with this field. Residents of Woodbridge should have, have, should have the facts so we can adequately assess the next steps. Thank you, Nancy Shattuck of Woodbridge. Amity Playing Fields from Diane King. To the Woodbridge Planning and Zoning Committee, my request is that you consider carefully all the current research that has been done on the possible toxicity of the artificial turf field that is to be installed and if reasonable, delay its construction until citizens of all three towns are aware of the pros and cons of the installation. In other words, through, though a vote was taken, the question is whether people have adequate up-to-date information and understand the implications of their vote in light of new research. I'm in hopes that you're receiving at the July 6 meeting all the pertinent information about why the installation may not be in the best interest of the Amity students in our town. Subject against artificial turf field from Jennifer Zigun. To whom it may concern, I'm a Woodbridge resident and I'm against the artificial turf field plan for Amity High School. I'm concerned about the health of the children using the field, as well as of the well water in the town. At the time the vote was taken in approving of this field, not all the dangers of this type of artificial turf were known. In addition, the details of the type of field were not specified on the ballot itself. Given the unclear ballot description and the new health concerns, I would like to express my opinion against the artificial turf field at Amity High School and in favor of the movement to stop building this field. Thank you. Sincerely, Jennifer Zigun. Turf Field Amity High School from Martin Ledowitz. 
I'm opposed to the immediate construction of the turf field at Amity High School. There are too many safety and health questions. Martin Ledowitz of Woodbridge. Amity High School from Marty and C.C. Ledowitz. I have numerous hence health and safety concerns about the planned construction of a new turf field at the high school from Francis Ledowitz of Woodbridge. Turf field from um, Scott and Jennifer Smith. Hello, we wanted to write you in favor of having the turf field project at Amity continue forward towards installation. As parents of two current students at Amity High School, it is important that the field and the track, lights, scoreboards, and bleachers are all installed to keep our athletes and their teammates safe and help reduce the costs that are associated with the grass field. This is an item that was already approved by the Amity community through the democratic vote and all information and concerns were already presented to the boards and PTO. Please do not allow a small group of residents to undermine a referendum vote that voted yes. Sincerely, Scott and Jennifer Smith of Orange. Regarding Amity request for special exemption permits from Tom Handler. Members of the Woodbridge Town Plan and Zoning Commission, my name is Thomas Handler. I've been a resident of Woodbridge for over 60 years. I'm writing to request that you deny or at least postpone Amity's request for a special exception permit for the excavation, removal, filling, grading, and processing of earth products related to the installation of an artificial turf field at Amity High School. As a retired physician, I have serious concerns regarding the use of artificial turf fields. I have followed the controversy surrounding artificial turf fields for years and voted against them in prior referendum. I was very disappointed in the, matter in which, in the manner in which the town was presented with the details prior to the most recent referendum. You know that Woodbridge residents still voted against the plan. At this point in the process, I'm particularly concerned about the toxic and carcinogenic materials that can leach from the crumb rubber infill and plastic grass carpet. I do not believe that Amity has done enough planning, especially in regards to testing and possible ramifications of contamination of groundwater. I strongly urge you to push back on the Amity plan for the artificial turf installation until they've done groundwater testing and have in place a plan for the regular testing and mitigation if necessary. Please turn down or at least delay granting the request for a special exemption permit. Respectfully, Thomas Handler, MD. Delay artificial turf field from Joanna Martinez. I, Joanna Martinez, oppose the immediate construction of the artificial turf field at Amity High School because of the numerous health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project, including the possibility of PFAS contamination of Woodbridge water and soil. It is prudent to study the matter further to ensure that harm is not a cause to Woodbridge residents. Sincerely, Johanna Martinez of Woodbridge. Amity High School turf field comments from Christine Cooper. Hello, I just wanted to voice my opinion in favor of the installation of the turf field at the high school. While I realize this was already voted for, I know there are many people in Woodbridge who are opposed. I feel our student athletes should have a turf field to be competitive with the other schools in our conference. I believe Amity is one of the few high schools without a turf field. Usually the grass fields for our JV and varsity teams are uneven, sometimes muddy, sometimes sloped fields that increase the occurrence of twisted ankles, knees, and other injuries. Injuries. Thank you, Christine Cooper of Woodbridge. Turf field, Nancy Scotty. Hello, my daughter is a sophomore at Amity. I don't understand why the turf field is not already in the works. We voted, we voted and it was a yes for turf. I'm not sure who these people that have been given enough empowerment to stop the work of the turf. A vote is a vote, and let us move on and get the turf field complete. My daughter is on the dance team, and I want to be able to watch her teams play and dance on turf. Thank you, Nancy Scotty. <laughs> Proposed Amity AstroTurf project from Andrew Danzig. The Woodbridge Planning and Zoning Commission, I oppose the installation of artificial turf at Amity High School. This project is not well thought out, is fraught with controversy, and it and imposes another financial burden on Woodbridge taxpayers. With the coronavirus pandemic creating doubt whether there will even be any sports played on the Amity fields this year, now is not the time to spend huge sums of money on this ill-conceived project. Ever-rising demand for money by the Beecher and Amity school systems has driven our mill rate to over 41. The school systems should be looking at ways to reduce expenses, not fund some keep up with the private school sports wish list. Amity needs to focus on educating its students in as cost-efficient a manner as possible. Aside from the financial burden on the taxpayers of this community, the project is just plain wrong. The risk of injury to athletes playing on artificial turf is much greater than on grass. Will the cost of treating those injuries occurred on school property fall to the taxpayers also? Others have raised concerns about the harm to the environment for the materials to be used. As an environmental engineer, I would need to evaluate the data before commenting. Those data have not been made available prior to seeking funding for this project. The project was inserted as a line item of many upgrades for the school. We weren't allowed to vote on this separately. 
at a minimum, it's time to hit pause the pause button on this project. Better yet, kill it now and save us the time, expense, and aggravation of the new debate. Thank you very much, Andrew Danzig, um, PE. We support a field from Ran Rajni Mehta. Dear planning and zoning, please find this email to voice my support for the approved AMD fields and that this project should commence and scheduled. Thank you, Rajni Mehta, resident of Bethany, Connecticut. Artificial turf. I live on Rice Road and I'm opposed to the installation of the artificial turf field. I have grandchildren who are on the track team and will be exposed to the toxins in the turf on a daily basis. Living so close to the field also causes concern about our well water, the health and safety of our children and the families in our neighborhood. Please consider reversing the decision to use this artificial turf. Francis Ledowitz. Support a field from Alan Dorius. Dear planning and zoning, please find this email to voice my support for the approved AMD fields and this project should commence as scheduled. Thank you, Alan Dorius, resident of Bethany. Against turf field from Rob Tappan. I'm against. I am against mainly because of the increased injuries to the kids that are caused by an artificial field and the cost. Natural grass, grass is a much more environmentally friendly surface and is much less prone to injuries. I do not know if the chemical hazard that some are complaining about is really an issue, but if so, that even adds to being against this plan, not to mention it is unnecessary. Thank you, Rob Tappan of Woodbridge. Turf field from Chris Johnson. I'm writing to you as an orange resident, a father, and the former citywide athletic director for Bridgeport who has visited athletic facilities across the state. When my family decided to relocate to Orange. It was primarily because of the school system and the community programs available. To date, we have never once questioned our decision to move to this community because we consider it to be one of the best communities in the state. I'm very familiar with educational and athletic facilities across the state, and I know that Amity's athletic field is not on par with others across the state. Currently, there is an equity issue with the grass field as the only football team that uses the field, meaning, our, our, meaning only football has the opportunity to host a night game. Hosting night games is a treat for all student athletes and oftentimes provides opportunities for family to watch games when typically would be at work in the normal four o'clock start time. Move to turf would grant equal access to the football teams, soccer teams, lacrosse teams, and would improve the track and field experience for boys and girls. High demand for access to the grass field only makes the playing service unsafe. Between high school events, pop Warner activities on the weekend, the grass field is abused and never given enough time to recover because the demand to use the field is so high. A move to a new turf field will alleviate that concern and grant more kids the opportunity to play in a state-of-the-art safe field. This would also include more access for youth sports organizations. In the community. Much of the research out there in regard to the ill effects of the turf field is inconclusive. An article in the San Diego Tri Union Tribune stated the National Nonprofit Synthetic Turf Council, which represents manufacturers and marketers of the product, said in 2016 that more than 90 studies and reports since 1990 failed to find any link between recycled rubber infill and cancer or any other human health risk. Recycled rubber is, also, is used in more than 98% of the 12,000 synthetic turf fields in the United States, according to the Turf Council. The product provides superior shock absorption, traction, foot stability, and safety it said, and it diverts millions of tires from landfills. In closing, a new turf field at Amity High School would keep Amity as one of the upper echelon schools in the state while also eliminating an equity issue and keep our kids safe while they play the sports that they love. And that is from Chris and Shwana Johnson. Letter concerning turf at Amity from Ken Carney. Good morning. Oh, this is a, a letter. Um, dear superintendent and chairman, I've supervised the installation of two turf fields for the city of West Haven. I believe some important information is being left out of the debate concerning the safety and benefits of artificial turf for the AMD school system. I would ask that you consider the following. First, the installation of artificial turf is a good investment. Currently, the field has bleachers, lighting, and a concession stand, which can only be used on a limited basis because use of the natural turf has to be restricted to preserve the turf in playable condition for games. The synthetic turf use of the field will not need to be limited. Other sports, including practices, can be on, this, on the game field, expanding who gets to use the field. This makes the best of the investments already made in bleachers, lighting, and the concession stand. A lighted synthetic turf field can be used almost three times as much as a natural turf field without increased maintenance. Enabling this amount of usage on a single field takes pressure off of other fields and avoid the clearing and development of land to construct more fields to meet demand. Second, as a public school, Amity is one of the few sand-based root zone fields left in the state. 
This type of field requires intensive maintenance to be kept in playing condition. The amount of fertilizer, water, top dressing, and irrigation are all greater than a typical natural turf field. This is because of the sand root zone, which drains intensively, but also leaches fertilizer and water through faster. Turf managers for this type of field also need to be well trained in turf management practices and have detailed plan for maintenance, especially considering the ban on pesticides at public school. The type of person is usually not available to a public school maintenance budget. Synthetic turf will require no water, fertilizer, or irrigation and requires relatively little or no maintenance compared to land, sand based fields, preserving those resources for other natural fields on the site. It also preserves a significant amount of water and eliminates the leaching of fertilizers and pesticides into adjacent wetland areas. Third, yes, the initial cost for synthetic turf is higher. Turf warranties are typically eight years. Turf life cycle is typically 12 to 14 years if properly maintained. Placement cost of the turf carpet and infill at the end of the cycle is about $700,000 in today's dollars. And the cost savings for the water bill, mowing, fertilizers, fungicides, replacing natural turf, taking the field offline to rest, rain delays, and limited use are factored in. The cost over 10 to 14 years for synthetic is actually very similar, if not less than natural. Fourth, injuries. There are many studies on artificial turf versus natural with regard to injury. Studies for the current generation of turf indicate the same, but the type of injuries are different. The level and severity of energy is about the same for natural versus synthetic. However, synthetic surfaces are more consistent and much safer in all regards compared to a poorly maintained or frozen natural turf field. Five, infections and bacteria. Studies from Penn State have shown that outdoor synthetic turf fields actually harbored less bacteria, um, MRSA and staph, than natural turf fields. UV exposure, the lack of nutrients are thought to kill off the bacteria. Application of sterilants or fungicides for to, synthet to synthetic turf are not needed or recommended for outdoor fields. Six, studies on the environmental concerns to human health and the environment regarding synthetic turf products and crumb rubber infill are available everywhere online. Some of these studies are valid. Many are for older, outdated products. The synthetic turf industry is hyper aware of the environmental concerns and has adjusted the way that it does business as concerns arise. There are now a variety of different turf products available that avoid or reduce perceived environmental exposures. All these new products have different pros and cons and cost implications to a project. In the end, particularly an owner budget decision in selecting a specific product. All the perceived environmental concerns can be addressed through product specifications and follow up testing. E.g., specifications can be written that require turf lead content shall be below XX or infill material must pass European testing for void. There are many studies online regarding these issues. However, there are no studies that I'm aware of that directly link synthetic turf to any health issue. The issue is largely based on perception of a product as considered artificial or recycled. Many opponents argue that natural turf is safer and more environmentally friendly, be maintained in a way that preserves usage. And we'll argue that the standard for all fields is well maintained natural bluegrass turf field. However, a healthy monoculture of grass requires trained and motivated staff mowing up to two times per week, weekly lime painting, fertilizers to maintain growth, herbicides to kill weeds and crab grass, and tens of thousands of gallons of water a month to keep growing. Natural turf fields are more, not more environmentally friendly than synthetic turf. Please do not hesitate to call if you wish to discuss any of the above in more detail. I'd be happy to volunteer if you think that would be any help to you. Sincerely, Ken Carney. Um, next, um, PNZ meeting subject to a concern. I would like to voice my concern regarding the possible installation of a turf field at AMD Regional High School. My family has lived in Woodbridge for five generations and I do not want a toxic material used on the fields our children use. Please take this into consideration when you hold the meeting this evening. Thank you, be well and stay safe. And Harley, Woodbridge. We're almost done. I'm in my last um, stat. No, you're not. We still got that other whole stat, but that's okay. <laughs> um, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Artificial uh, turf. Point of order. Would you yeah. consider after the stack at least giving yourself a five minute break? Yeah, I, I need something after <laughs> at least a. a, a Thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, all right. Artificial turf at Amity High School from Marge Akanusik. For Ms. Sullivan, I would like to express my opposition to the installation of artificial turf and crumb rubber tire infill to the fields at Amity High School. I thought this issue was voted down in the past, and I am very concerned that it's not been vetted to the community. 
There's a Woodbridge resident, Amity, um, AMHS parent and physician, take special interest in the health issues concerning this installation. There are potential toxicities and carcinogenic issues with this installation. The Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection found in a 2010 study that stormwater passing through crumb rubber regularly exceeded acute aquatic acute toxicity for zinc. Additionally, copper, barium, manganese, and aluminum were found at elevated level levels after stormwater contact with the material. Also, we need to model good environmental practices to the students' vanity. More plastic is not the approach we should be doing. Thank you, Marjorie Kenyusik. The Amity High School Stadium Project from Amy Goodwin. Honorable First Selectman Heller and Ms. Sullivan, I'm writing to in support. I'm writing in support of the Amity High School Earth Field Project, which was voted on and approved in December of 2019. Referendum passed and the community voted yes. Administration put countless hours in thoroughly researching the safest material for use on all weather field to ensure the safety of our athletes, students, and faculty. This project was presented to all towns, Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, and PTO meeting. An ample time was provided for concerns, questions, and all information was and is still transparent on the Amity Athletic website. I am a parent of two athletes who attend Amity High School and would never support something which would cause harm to them or any other person. Turf will allow extended play seasons and increase the safety of all athletes. It has come to my attention that a resident of Woodbridge has been illegally providing false and conclusive information about the project to the residents of Woodbridge. Unsolicited flyers were placed in mailboxes. Emails were sent using email addresses from the school's mailing list to push her agenda. The resident also tried to halt the same project in North Haven. However, she has been able to prove any conclusive health studies on the project continues. No issues have arisen arised with the installation of turf in, turf in North Haven. She has a petition stating that turf concern, that turf contains PFAS and lead, which it does not. I'm asking that you please hear the voices of the community and continue with the process which was voted on. Thank you. Approval of turf fields um, from Brittany Maisler. Good morning, I'm writing this letter in support of the previously approved vendor and plans to install turf on our athletic field. I'm a homeowner and resident of Orange, and I agree with the plan to move forward as planned with these fields. This is an issue that has already been discussed, voted on, and approved by my fellow Amity neighbors and should move forward as planned. Given our current times, it is important for us as a community to stay the course and provide some normalcy for our children and families and give them something to look forward to. If any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Brittany Maisler. Planning and zoning comment from Patrick Reed. Hello, Ms. Sullivan. Please share this next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. I'm writing to voice my support for the stadium renovations, including the installation of the synthetic turf field at Amity Regional High School. I'm a parent of an eight-year-old daughter and a Woodbridge resident. Um, I'm a parent of eight-year-old daughters and a Woodbridge resident. These upgrades are long overdue. In Amity, we celebrate three pillars of education, academic, arts, and athletics. Our current facilities at Amity, student, at Amity do not provide our students with access to facilities that are commensurate with the other communities such as ours. Our student athletes are limited in the time that they can train due to weather and field condition, which places them at a disadvantage compared to their competitors. We're the only district in our district reference group, a cohort made of districts similar size and economic makeup that does not have a turf field. Furthermore, our current stadium is only used by our football team because the field conditions make it unplayable by other sports. In my opinion, this is unfair to other student athletes, especially our female student athletes, who do not receive, equal ac receive access to equal facilities. This issue was voted on in a referendum and passed by the MD voters long before the referendum superintendent buyers began making numerous presentations to town boards and commissions about the planned upgrades. During that time, the public had ample opportunity to comment and ask questions, and many residents did. With that fair and thorough process, the referendum passed. However, since the referendum, a small group of residents have voiced their opposition to the results of the vote. They have presented much information. However, none of the information is new or warrants reversing the referendum to cease these much needed renovations. I encourage you to respect the will of voters and move this project forward. Turf Field at Amity High School from Jonathan First. To the Town Plan and Zoning Commission, I'm writing to you to you to voice my strong support for the construction of the turf field at Amity High School. I believe it is in the best interest of all the students at Amity, both for athletes and non-athletes alike. The turf field will provide a safer, more expanded facility capable, more expanded facility capability than was possible with the grass field. Thank you, Jonathan First of Woodbridge. 
TPZ meeting, we support Amity's turf field from Amy Turner Burns. Good afternoon, Woodbridge TPZ. I was shocked to hear there was a petition to stop the turf field at Amity High School. The referendum passed in December of 2019, and the project was due to start last month. Any POW residents took time out of their work day to get to the polls, hopefully not in vain. I'm concerned with the information being put out against this project, this group of citizens sending emails and more importantly, stuffing mailboxes with literature is illegal and disconcerting. Amity administration spent countless hours speaking in each town at Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education and PTA, PTO meetings. All information was transparent in the 28 page presentation. They completed thorough research on this project and chose the best and safest turf for our students and community. This is the same turf that is now being used at the Yale Bowl and Patriot Stadium, among many. It does not contain lead or PFAS chemicals, as the petition states. However, these chemicals have been found in our water, regularly tested, and meeting state and federal, regu- federal guidelines as established by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. I've seen many studies about turf, including a three-year study by US EPA, and found them inconclusive. As a competitive athlete, I have played on turf for 40 years and support this product. The turf will increase safety and extend play seasons. Grass is not always ready for play. Drainage, mud, and ruts and puddles may get uneven and very susceptible to injuries. With the turf field, cancellations of games and practices due to wet fields will be almost zero. No cost for seeding, fertilization, watering, anti-pest, anti-fungal treatments to grass. No more renting fields for practice and tryouts because of unusable wet fields. This project will take our one sport, three level grass field to a turf field where 18 teams can play. I look forward to watching many sporting events on the turf fields. Thank you, Amy Burns. Turf field project from Jennifer Cifarelli. For Selectman Heller, Ms. Sullivan, and Jerry Shaw, I'm writing in support of the Amity High School turf field project, which was voted on and approved in December of 2019. Referendum passed and the community voted yes. The administration put countless hours in researching the safest material for use in an all weather field to ensure the safety of our athletes, students, and coaches. This project was presented to all towns, Board of Finance, Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, and PTO meetings, and there was plenty of time provided for concerns and questions. I'm a parent of a son who attends Amity High School and would not support something which would cause harm to him or other children. Turf will allow extended play seasons and increase the safety of all athletes. I've heard of a Woodbridge resident has been providing false information about the project to the residents of Woodbridge, putting flyers in mailboxes to put a sure agenda. This resident also tried to stop the same project in North Haven. She also has a petition stating that the turf contains PFAS and lead, which it does not. I'm asking that you please hear the voices of our community and continue with the process and can be voted on all day. Thank you for taking the time to hear our voices, and hopefully this will go through like it was supposed to. Sincere. Thank you, the Cifarelli family from Orange. Suspend artificial turf field construction for health reasons from Tracy Cipriano. Dear members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, please suspend. The artificial turf field construction planned at the Amity Regional High School. Research suggests that artificial turf not only is related to increased serious physical injuries in youth sports, but is also a health hazard to both players and Woodbridge residents caused by turf-related toxic environmental exposures. Thank you for your consideration, Tracy Cipriano. Please vote against artificial turf from Hillary Drum. Your members of the Woodbridge Town Plan and Zoning Commission, my name is Hillary Drum and I reside at 11 Mulberry Road in Woodbridge. I've signed and fully support the petition calling for a three year moratorium on the installation of an artificial turf field at Amity High School. As a healthcare professional, a Woodbridge resident, and as a parent, I have serious concerns regarding artificial turf fields. Toxic and carcinogenic chemicals leach from both the crumb rubber infill and from the plastic grass carpet. Crumb rubber is now a petrochemical. Um, Crumb rubber is a petrochemical polymer. It is basically a plastic that does not decompose, but rather degrades into smaller and smaller plastic bits that make their way into organisms in the food chain. This artificial carpet contains numerous toxic compounds, including PFAS. These forever chemicals do not naturally break down. They bioaccumulate in organisms and cause cancer, nervous system toxicity, decreased fertility, immune dysfunction, and thyroid and cardiovascular disease. Growing awareness and concern about PFAS toxicity prompted Governor Lamont to create the PFAS Task Force, which released an action plan in November of 2019 to minimize exposure to PFAS and clean up current sources of PFAS pollution. We now know that our official turf fields leach significant amounts of PFAS, so installing one would be a brazen violation of the state directive with unlimited liability. In 2019, I joined the Woodbridge Sustainability Committee because I have a great respect for our environment and community and want us all to prosper in a most sustainable way possible. It would be 
remiss and disgraceful to allow this to go on in our town and affect our drinking water supply as well as our natural flora and fauna. My family moved to Woodbridge five years ago and have come to love this town. If the town were to make this choice to fund crumb rubber our official turf when we know it will have negative impact on our children and community, it would make me seriously consider moving. Respectfully, Hillary Drum, APRN of Woodbridge. Artificial turf field from Mindy H. Here, Woodbridge Planning and Zoning Committee. In 2018, our son was eagerly looking forward to starting his freshman year in Amity. He was so excited to start running cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track. <clears throat> he started training with the team over the summer before the school year even began. Unfortunately, his training got cut short when he was diagnosed with cancer. He had multiple surgeries and an excruciating chemotherapy regimen. He stayed strong and fought with unbelievable courage and determination. One of his many motivators for beating cancer was wanting to run with his fellow Amity teammates. During his cancer battle, Amity was amazing. The principal, vice principal, his guidance counselor, and all his teachers were supportive, encouraged, encouraging, and devoted. He felt like he had his own team of doctors and teachers helping him with every step. In 2019, our son finished fighting this horrible battle. He succeeded. He was in remission. One of the first things he wanted to do was start training again. He not only started training, but he has been practicing with the Amity team, competing in meets. He's worked so hard to get himself to this point. He is the ultimate warrior. As Amity is debating on whether or not to use the artificial turf on their field, we can't sit quietly by and not speak up. Amity should not move forward with the immediate installation of the artificial turf field because of the numerous health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project. This project should not move forward with so many concerns. The concerns are, concerns are for the health and safety of our children. Parents today should not have to worry if the school they are sending their children to is safe because of the turf they have. This is something we can control and we should. If there's any doubt about the proposed fields being safe or not, then we should stop. Our children should not suffer because of a decision that the adults make. It is our job to protect the children, so let's do that and stop the construction of the artificial turf field. Thank you, Mindy and Yaren Bache of Woodbridge, Connecticut. Amity Turf Fields from Carly Costanzo. Gentlemen, although I don't live in Woodbridge, my children are part of the Amity School family as they enter seventh and ninth grades. We are active in sports in the community. We'd like to see our Amity High School reach its full capacity as one of the top schools in the state, the only one without turf fields. I'm also a concerned citizen of Amity. No one wants chemicals dumped into the ecosystem. However, this is material that has been tested and proven at professional stadiums and high school stadiums all over Connecticut. We did hold a vote. It is too bad that one of the three towns voted against the students, the one town where the school is located. Don't you want to move Amity forward, or do we enjoy watching our athletes go to private schools because they believe that Amity can offer a fabulous education? However, the sports program does not match. The children go to private school. We can never build up to a championship team. Academics and athletics should go hand in hand. Please move Amity forward and invest in the turf. Sincerely, the Costanzo family formerly board members of Amity Little League Softball and current board members of Amity Youth Lacrosse Football. From Ali Senajani, um, which is, has a letter via attachment. Dear committee members, as scientists, research scholars, and residents of Woodbridge, we strongly oppose the installation of a crumb rubber artificial turf field at Amity High School. The crumb rubber used as the substrate in artificial turf fields is highly mobile, long-lasting, and toxic material will threaten the health of our children and our local environment for decades to come. We have PhDs in biological and environmental science fields and have experience conducting research in the areas of cancer, DNA damage, mutation, human diseases, ecology, and environmental science. Numerous studies conducted over two, nearly two decades have demonstrated that artificial turf fields pose long-term costs that outweigh any potential benefit. Specifically, we have identified three specific areas of concern. One, the materials used in artificial turf fields release chemicals that can directly affect human health. A, the National Institutes of Health National Toxicology Program published results of a study that demonstrated increased toxicity of human cells with exposures to chemicals that leached out of crumb rubber. Tested two routes of exposure, inhalation and dermal. The most potent effect was on lung cells, but eritinocytes were also susceptible. The study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in the U.S. in December of 2019, researchers from McGill University concluded that crumb rubber leach chemicals which impaired embryonic development. Significantly, both studies were done using crumb rubber contaminated water leaching. A paper published in February of 2019 evaluated the potential carcinogenicity of substances found in crumb rubber and determined that 197 of the 307 chemicals 
found in crumb rubber met the criteria to be classified as carcinogenic. Materials used two. The materials used in artificial turf fields harm fish and invertebrates in aquatic and estuarine net habitats in multiple ways. First, crumb rubber releases chemicals known as endocrine disruptors that can mimic female hormones and negatively impact the physiology of vertebrate and invertebrate organisms. Locally, researchers at the University of New Haven detected lower growth rates and abnormal tissue growth in marsh fish exposed to crumb rubber during development. Three, the materials used in artificial turf fields are easily transported to the surrounding environment and contributing to microplastics and other polymer particulate pollutants. Crumb rubber is easily transported into surrounding environments. Like other particulate polymer pollutants, crumb rubber is consumed by organisms and accumulates when they're within their intestinal tracts. Though not studied as extensively as other types of particulate polymers, crumb rubber likely behaves similarly to microplastics, which are known to bioaccumulate becoming concentrated in higher trophic organisms, e.g. fin whales. Recent research has demonstrated direct and indirect impacts of artificial turf fields on human and environmental health. We expect future research will reveal additional negative consequences of long-term exposures. We implore you to think of all our town's children and people's health, which we all value very much. We therefore strongly oppose the use of crumb rubber for our artificial turf field because of the numerous health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with this project. We urge the members of the committee to consider the long-term health and environmental impacts that the use of this project will have in our community. It's signed by Christian Conroy, PhD, Ali Reza Senanjani, PhD, and Christina Evanzito, PhD. And um, Christian Conroy is from Northeastern U University. Um, Ali Reza Senanjani is from UConn, and Christine Christina Ivanzito is from Yale. Turf field, last two. Turf field, uh, last two in my pile before we take our five minute break. Um, turf field from Jessica Sebluski. As a Woodbridge resident, I would like to write you to say that I support the turf field going forward. This update not just to not just the field, but the track goes around and the bleachers is well overdue. All my best, Jessica Sebluski. Re -pre please read this at the town meeting this evening from Eric Kirsch Kirschnar. The prolonged maintenance, I'm sorry, with the prolonged cost of maintaining grass fields being similar in cost to the installation of rubber filled turf field, I strongly support the installation of the turf field. My family, including three kids at Beecher School, will, meet, will benefit immensely from this local resource. We presently bypass Pease Road Field and travel to other towns, private and public, to play sports on Grum Barber Field. Turf Field in Woodbridge will help the development of our local youth athletes and improve our, the school sports programs for high school athletes. My family understands the potential health risks associated with the rubber field used outdoors and wants the fields. Please follow through with the vote. Thank you, Eric Kirshner. Okay. Um, so we are. About five minutes before 10, I'm just going to take a four minute break if people are okay with that. And Chris will figure out how best to. Affect the rest of the pile? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it is almost 10 o'clock, and we've been. Hey, hey Rob. Yeah. Um, are we obligated to finish the agenda as presented? Or can we at some point table the rest until the next meeting or, or a subsequent meeting? Um, or Chris. Chris, any thoughts on that? Um, if you're getting tired, if all the members are getting tired, certainly you can continue the hearing to another meeting. Um, we would have to notice it and. Yeah. It's a hearing continuation, so it gets posted on the town website. Um, I honestly don't think you're realistically going to get through the rest of the stuff. <laughs> As he looks at the pile. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I have, I, since I just got this a few minutes before we even started, I'm not even sure what what in, I, I'm not going to read into the record all of these attachments. No. no, there's attachments and there's email. So it, it might go quickly. I 
but there are also written letters. So, so, um, so I need to like get a cookie or maybe some coffee or something. So um, <laughs> let's give me like three minutes. Like my brain can. You want to recess for five? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, then we'll recess okay. for five. Thanks for everyone. Appreciate it. So, um, you know, so this is really unprecedented. When I first joined the commission, we had meetings that went past midnight. And when I first joined, I thought that was like the routine. And it was because there was so much public con uh, public comment and people were there that we had to do it. This is different. We're all just sitting here listening. And then after this, there would have to be debate and discussion, which I think is going to be compromised by um, by there not being any interaction. Um, so, I, and I'm also going to say that while I respect your sense, Rob, that it might take another 30 minutes. When you first started reading, you said it thought might take an, you thought it might take an hour, and here we are over two and a half hours later. So um, I'm not sure. I have to get up early tomorrow and work. I'm sure other people, except Priyani, are in the same boat. And um, I don't necessarily think that, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I just question whether it's um, um, a good thing for us to continue this evening. I do know that were we to continue the hearing, we would all, everybody here would have to be present. Other reactions from members of the commission? Before I, I agree. This is Jeff Kennedy. I agree with what Kathleen just said. It just could go on for another few hours or two hours before we get to actually looking at the material and discussing it as a group. I don't see why we can't um, particularly ask our our you know our two guests, the superintendent and uh, the the gentleman from the on the firm, if if they can also be available, and if they can't be available on the thirteenth, certainly maybe we can find a different day that to continue the hearing too. I don't know, but I agree with what Kathleen said as well. Paul, any anything you'd like to add? I concur with Kathleen and and, and uh, Jeff and Yoni and everybody else. Um, so, uh, to our applicant, um, should we open up calendars and look for, actually to everyone, right? Well, uh, um, first to the applicant, your reaction, comments, back. Yeah, Dr. Byers, do you want to go first? But we, we will absolutely make our calendars available. Um, so, we will be at your pleasure. If you're willing to meet next Monday, we will be here. And, and I echo that sentiment. We will be available whenever the Planning and Zoning Commission needs to meet with us. Okay. Um, so, thank you um, <laughs> for 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 that and being willing to accommodate a. Um, Kathleen, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I, I have a clarification question. Um, if other comments are received. If we continue this hearing and other comments are received, do those need to also be read into the record, Chris? Um, if the hearing is continued, then the comment period remains open. And so, yes, they would have to be read into the record since we're not um, doing any oral comment. In some of the meetings that we've had lately with other boards and commissions, not everybody's it's been sketchy about getting um, voices in, and that's part of the reason why we were uh, leery of trying to get public comment as public real comment, because we didn't want to miss anybody. You know, we thought mm -hmm. the written comment was at least a, a way of definitely getting comment that people wanted. Right. Um, so if that's the case, there are undoubtedly going to be more comments that come in. So can we either start earlier or share the pain so that Rob is not the only one reading? Whatever you'd like to do. You know, tonight we had stuff that came in and literally Rob was kind enough to stop by and pick it up because I was copying and scanning until quarter after seven from what came in today. And, and that, that's the, the challenge of it is that when I, Chris, I assume the deadline again will be four o'clock on whatever date we pick. There will be. Um, 
it could be earlier. I mean, you could close it to the, you know, if you continued it to next Monday, you could yeah. conceivably say that it would be closed on Friday and that would give me all day Monday to get stuff done without having to keep downloading stuff. But we can verify that with town council. Yeah, because that would, would help in, um, I'm sure everyone else wants to try to pronounce all the chemical names, um, <laughs> which I happen to know a little bit about them, so I think I didn't uh, mess up too many. Um, it does, does the Monday the 13th, first of all, does that work? I know, Yoni, you're still. It's fine for me, I'll be back. Um, Chris, what if we have other members that are then available on the 13th? Does that change anything? Um, as long as everybody is familiar with the hearing record, um, they can so state for the record before a vote is taken. And um, they that's all they need to do. So they can either watch um, this program that's being taped, um, or they can, because everything is written, they can review all those written documents and state for the record that they have done so. Yeah. Yeah. Kathleen made a, a really good, she looks like you have another point, but you had a good one as well on the timing. Can we start earlier recognizing yeah. that we'll be doing the reading for a while, but we would like to actually have discussion, debate, and frankly, the reaction from the applicant. Um, yeah. So it doesn't have to be 730? No. <laughs> And you can schedule it for whatever is best suited for you. And, and the applicants and PUA. Um, in terms of um, uh, uh, additional comments, I know that there were meetings in the past where we had said to people that they could only make um, a comment once when it was a public session. Is it, is it, can we, um, can we implement that for this? Because clearly some of the people who are the most impassioned have already submitted their comments and we've heard them, they're a part of the record. And I don't think we need to hear them again. Um, I suppose if they had a new point they were making, we could consider it. But because we've done that in the past, I think we should consider it because otherwise we risk having the same amount of reading being done and we're hearing the same sort of, um, we're, we're hearing from the same people again. I think that if we're going to entertain more comments, which absolutely I support and makes sense, it, I, I believe it needs to be from those who haven't yet had an opportunity to, um, to submit their comments and have them read into the record. Okay, um, so what we have left um, of not having been read into the record is from, uh, two presenters, one is Chandra Prasad, and the other is, um, oh, sorry, uh, Donna Schuster. So all of their material has yet to be formally entered into your record. Um, but in terms of people, those are the remaining two people that we haven't entered their material into the record formally. Right, Under understood, but we've heard from various of so the Silverstein family and Luciani and I mean there's there's been a whole bunch of people we've heard from which is absolutely wonderful but what I'm saying is I don't think that that um we should or um need to entertain comments from the same people again I can verify with town council that that's fine <laughs> I don't know what others think about that I'm, I'm just making a suggestion I, I I think it's a good suggestion. It will be in how that continuation is and the recognition that the common period is still open is worded, which town council can hopefully help on that can suggest for those who have already submitted comments, they have been <clears throat> read into the record. You, you do not need to resubmit, you know, something in that. And I don't think you can, if I'm guessing the time, we probably can't stop someone from submitting something again, but can only encourage you don't have to submit it if you already have submitted it. Again, it's in the record, would be my guess. Other reactions on the commission? 
I think we know what the key issues are. I agree with everyone's points, including Kathleen, about hearing from as many folks as we can. And we want to make sure we um, serve the needs of Woodbridge and, and Amity by making sure we hear what everyone's point of views are. But we have heard a lot of tremendous material already uh, that we need to work through. So I think we could get to point where we start to get sort of redundant and I think there's some urgency to the project itself that demands we take action and I don't want to limit what folks have to say but um, I think we know what the major key issues are at this point yep yeah, no I, I I agree that they and I'm sure that the applicant has been taking notes and you also will have kind of a week to kind of prepare your, your responses to the the big, you know, I would probably bucket into three or four big issues that are, are put forth. I just, the, the town council will, will guide us on how we can try to manage and hopefully not get a similar size stack of the same thing just repeated again. Um, I don't think... Um, I think there is a way to word that, you know, mentioning of the comment peering period still being open. And I think um, Chris finding a appropriate time to close that comment period that's not four o'clock before the meeting is a good idea. Um, also, how early should we start? I mean, do you guys want to have dinner at our meeting? Feel free. I, I haven't even had dinner yet. It's okay. <laughs> See, I managed to eat during Malona McBroom's presentation. That's <laughs> I went off video. There. Sorry, guys. Um, it was um, is six thirty too early? Is that that's another hour? Let me check with Pua. Okay, let's see if we can aim for. I I mean, I can go six too. I mean, I can go even earlier. But I, any other reactions from the group? And for the applicants, does it? So I, I, you know, the earlier the better for us. But I understand that other people have jobs at work until normal hour. Um, and the earlier the better. It doesn't matter on when you take the Um Our media specialist is telling us that you know six would work. We're amenable. Uh, everyone else, I'm seeing nods around the, uh, like, Jeff, you're on the phone, so I can't see you nod. That's okay. Okay, six, we'll aim for six o'clock. Thank you, Puma. So, Rob, so that may be uh, too early for me. What, um, or, or Chris, what are the rules if I can't make it for the start? If they make the decision that night, um, and you have not been here for the entire part of the hearing, then you would not be able to vote. If they continue um, the day that they have discussion and action, then you have that same opportunity to review any material that you missed and um, then state for the record. Is that true even if what happens um, at during the part that Paul misses is um, the reading of comments? If Paul is able to read those comments on his own? I understand what you're saying, Chris, because that's the usual procedure. People have to be present for all parts of a hearing. But if the hearing is just calling it to order and the reading in of comments, and Paul can Paul knows the comments are going to be read first, is is that a reasonable I would have um, to check what adjustment to make. I know school uh, school council. Sorry, that's me. I know um, uh, town council will will have to weigh in on that. But I think it's a question worth asking because we barely had a quorum tonight. I will definitely ask the question. It makes logical sense that if we're just proceeding with that material, which he already has in hand and can review, it would make sense, and he can state that. Um, and that speaks to closing the comment period on Friday afternoon. So anybody who maybe can't make that six o'clock uh, start could have the time they need to review everything to be fully up to speed for the for the meeting.
So I, I think that's a good argument to make uh, for town council. Paul is, could you do 6.30? I mean, is it are we just a half hour off or? I'm gonna, Monday, I mean, I'll do my best obviously, um, but but six is, is, is definitely pushing it for me to get out of work and get and get home. Because I don't want, I mean, selfishly, I don't want to risk getting stuck at the office, um, like the uh, like the folks in their conference room. <laughs> I can sit <laughs> until all hours of the night. But that's me being selfish, so I apologize for that. But but Paul, you can also probably call in, like Jeff. And oh, Jeff right. I didn't think about that. Sure. Yeah. All right. So let's aim at six. Okay. Chris, you'll send out another invite. I will send out another invite. I will make sure that Jeff's alternative email is on that original invite so that he's not Thank in you, my Chris. personal room. And um, I'll just move, I'll just continue this meeting until that date so that you can take the rest of your agenda and put it on that um, meeting. Yep. That sounds good. So we need a motion or a Move to continue the hearing. Second. Any uh, discussion, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We will continue the hearing. Thank you all. Thank you to the applicant for your time and attention. Um, we look forward to seeing you in a week. You have a good sense of uh, the various comments and the issues that the uh, members of the uh, public have raised. Thank you to the commission for your time tonight and a thank you to all the folks that actually did take quite a bit of time and effort to submit um, very thoughtful, robust um, comments um, that have been read into the record. Um, they are uh, a sign of how uh, um, significant an issue this is and how seriously folks are taking it. So we appreciate that. With that, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Good job, Rob. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Rob. Chairman Clay, very well done. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Pua, for all the the make us all look good and all the, the hard work that you guys do uh, behind the scenes. So we'll make sure that Chris Cobb saying good job.